Hello and welcome to the Quarantine Theater Company. Um, tonight we're going to be doing Meet the Parents. Um, bear with us. Uh, the script that I purchased online from Scriptfly is not in order. So you may see some <laughs> scenes. You're like, where do these people come from? Wait a minute. They already met. That's why. Um, so anyway, it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And, you know, hey, it's, it's the spice of life. Not actual spice, but, you know, spice of life. Anyway, uh, wrong movie. <laughs> joining us tonight, um, Jen may be joining us as scene description and Debbie. If not, I will be doing all of that. Um, we got Logan with us. He's going to be our Greg Fokker. Welcome, Fokker. <laughs> going to be a great Fokker tonight, man. Right? Yeah, Fokker away. Um, <laughs> George is joining us. Uh, he's going to be our Jack Burns, but in this script version of the script, his name is Ben. We've got the lovely Nicole with us tonight. She's going to be yes. all Pam. And then, of course, last but not least, we've got everybody's favorite cherubic alien by the name of Travis. He is going to be our Kevin Raleigh. And um, Denny and uh, many other characters. So, um, without further ado, let's take it away. Meet the Parents by Jem Hertzfeld. Uh, this is a 72997 edition and is in really bad shape. So, I apologize if I pause when I'm trying to read. Exterior Chicago skyline, move by the lake, the loop, the Sears Tower, State Street, and as a slick talk show theme fades up. Damn it, Travis, already? And that's a production assistant. Two you minutes later. Oh my God. Two minutes later, two. Oh my God. Exterior downtown Chicago TV studio. A billboard atop a soundstage proclaims Rita! A big cutout of Rita, white, 40, and fabulous, 30, flirty, and fabulous, uh, beside it, interior, the Rita production offices, an executive producer of Virgil, and Rita herself rush from a glass-enclosed track-lit office through a maze of cubicles heading towards the music and the stage. Behind them, an entourage of, uh, of a headset-wearing assistants and a trio of makeup people primping the rushing Rita. Interior, a small windowless office. Greg, an unassuming producer in his 30s, is on the phone looking pained. In one hand, a smoldering camel, in the other, a small black velvet box open to reveal a dazzling engagement ring. And as his eyes, as he has the ring in the desktop photo was girlfriend, Pam. Yes, I'm disappointed. I wanted it to happen, but if it can't, you can't. Through his open doorway, he sees an oncoming entourage. Look, I'm going to Boston tomorrow for a wedding and I'll be back next week. And we'll talk about rescheduling then, okay? Great, okay, I gotta go. He hangs up, pockets the ring, then spins into a wall where dozens of index cards are pushed pinned to a huge cork board. There's show ideas, the topics in felt tip ink, porn star parents, dysfunctional family feud, murdering moms, etc. Greg plucks a few off the wall, falling behind Virgil and Rita entourage as they zip by his office door. Interior production office continuous. Virgil, Rita. Greg. Greg. Yeah, about Friday's show. The hypochondria family. That's not happening. What? What? I, Why, not? Why not? The dad just called. They're sick. Damn. I knew that show was a bad idea. Okay, Rita, but but I have plan B. Well, let's hear him, Greg. Come on. Greg holds up a stack of index cards, one line on each. Wham, bam, thank you, ham. Confessions of a pig farmer. I thought we did that. <laughs> <laughs> Bestiality. What you did yeah. last month. Next. From mama's boy to mama's boyfriend, mother son incest. <laughs> Not bad. And Mother's Day is Sunday. Try last Sunday. Shit! I want to watch the show. He rolls and screams to an assistant a foot behind him. Logan! Send my mom some candy. Melted in old FedEx pouch and... Oh, what else, Greg? Come on. 
Greg Isaacard flips it over and back again. Signs. Wham, bam. Thank you, Jam. The food fetish thing? You pitched that last week. I know, but there's a show there. We can have Dr. Ruth uh, get a chef. Hey, hey, let's get that guy from L.A., the German. What's his name? I, I can't remember. Fuck. Puck? No, Wolfgang Puck. Get him. He's hot. And we can open with the clip we were saving for our Caught on Tape show, the one with the bakery employee nailing a pastry. I'm loving this. Give me a title. Sex, Pies, and Videotape. Yes! You the man, Greg. Get humping boy wonder. <laughs> Get humping. Whop! She slaps Greg's ass. Classy. And as the entourage moves through the stage door towards the sound of applause in a cheesy announcer's voice. Uh, so let's give a windy city welcome to the great white Oprah, Rita. Wow. <laughs> they said that. As Greg starts to scribble sex pies video on his index card, he stops, stares at it, and sighs. I think I'm getting out of here. Interior O'Hare International Airport. A jet takes off, getting people out of there. <laughs> That's a way to word it. Interior O'Hare Terminal, Food Court, Windy City Walk. Greg and Pam Burns, also 30, eat bad Chinese with luggage at their feet. And as Greg reaches for one of the two fortune cookies. Whoa, that's mine. That one's yours. It's pointing at you. Pam, it's round. It's not. It's shaped like a magnet and it's attracted to you. Just, just take it. Greg takes his cookie and then slides Pam's towards her. And no adding between the sheets. It's in bed, but she takes hers, breaks it, and pulls out her fortune. Big joy awaits you. Who's big joy? Oh my God. Sorry. She looks up, Greg smiling, of course, having added in his head between the sheets. You're doing it, aren't you? Oh. Uh huh. So, what's the smiling at? Just wondering if Big Joy has a friend. <laughs> you're 10 years old you know that and you shouldn't goof on fortune cookies sometimes they're prolific is that a fancy but, word for stale i definitely mess up yeah you know you're, you're gonna read yours to make a change stronger <laughs> break it pam rolls her eyes as greg adds bts in his head kind of kinky fine i'm keeping it you'll see greg chooses cookie and then glances at his watch grunts interior crowded o'hare terminal seconds later pam and greg hurry through the throng lugging their bags as they pass by a bar there's a small amount of tv showing Rita refereeing while all a white trash family goes at it uh-oh don't look best man's holiday Ah, uh, yes, the trailer trash family from Tulsa. To meet them is to know why God makes tornadoes. <laughs> I will never get that. How can a family fight in front of millions? My family won't even fight out loud. Too bad, or I could get them on Rita and really fuck up their lives. <laughs> Whoa, easy. It's not the Greg show. You're just following orders. Yeah, well, donk a shame, but it's really starting to bug me. I mean, think of all the lives I've helped ruin, the, the families I've destroyed. The money you've made? No, but maybe I need to quit. Quit? They get on a moving sidewalk, Pam, Ivel, and Greg. Look, honey, there are worse things in life than being broke and jobless. Like what? Being broke, jobless, and having to meet your girlfriend's parents. <laughs> He grins, clearly oh. kidding. How about the oldest single woman at your baby sister's wedding? Ow. Sucker bun. You started it tough, guy. Yeah, but I was kidding. Well, so was I. Look, Greg, I'm not stressing over this. I mean, maybe if Debbie were 28, I would be, but she's 24. She's a freak. No one marries that young. 
I had a girl on the phone last week who tied the knot at 10. What is that? Is that legal? Not when your husband is your dad. Oh, you need to quit. Interior terminal by the metal detectors. They get in the line waiting to pass through security. So, you're nervous. Ah, uh, when your number's up, it's up. I just hope if something <laughs> catastrophic happens, the death comes quickly. I meant about meeting my parents. Oh, I know. <laughs> you must be nervous or you wouldn't be acting like such a spaz. They reach the metal detectors, both of them handing their bags to a searcher before getting in line for the arch. Honestly, I might be if this were a normal visit, but this week it's not about me. It's about the wedding and Debbie and the doctor. Dr. Bob. Right. So my plan is to show up, meet your family, have fun, and avoid any unnecessary attention. Craig sets off the alarm, hands jerk, people stare, and a hardcore security man, woman steps over to him. Sir, step over here and empty your pockets into a tray. <laughs> empty my pockets. Into a tray. I can't do that right now. Hey, go 30! <laughs> The big security guard named Ray starts over. Greg turns and calls through security arch to Pam. Hey, Pam, I'll meet you at the gate. Um, that's okay, honey. I can wait. Big Ray's there now, holding a metal detector wand. Spread your legs and arms, sir. Was this really necessary? It sounds like I've, I've got a bomber. Uh, jacket, a bomber jacket. <laughs> you know, like the kind Indiana Jones wears. Uh, Craig winces, amazed by his lameness. The wand beeps. And he won't empty his pockets. Look, I would, except I have something in my pants. A surprise. A really big surprise uh, for my girlfriend. A ring. It's an engagement ring. Either take, take it out, out and we all have a little... Take it and scan it. <laughs> Works for me. Mark Nickel. Greg turns his back to Pam, pops up the locks, and as he discreetly moves the ring box from his pocket to the suitcase, that is super dumb. Carry on, bitch. Interior packed jetliner. Pam's in her seat getting situated as Greg desperately tries to cram his bag into an already overstuffed bin. Throw it under the seat, sir. It won't fit under the seat. <laughs> Welcome to American. <sighs> He spins, pops open another bin, bags to let Greg breaking their fall with his head. Then you'll have to check it. I, I can't. It contains medication. He smacks a side pouch, pills, and a bottle. Jiggle. Then take it out. Greg, she stares at Greg. Greg nods and unzips a pouch and pulls out. Vitamin C? Yes, I'm battling scurry ah well have a seat sailor and i'll get you a nice big can of oj she flashes a phony grin takes the vitamins zip zips them back in and then hands him a claim check sticker as she drags his bag away and greg sighs and plops down beside pam what's the big deal i just really hate checking my bags like, what am i supposed to do with this stick it on the back of the tickets she pulls the tickets out of Greg's front pocket and... Oh, my God. What? These tickets are wrong. We're coming back Sunday. They say Monday. Greg slumps in the seat, smiles and sighs. Boy, you're nosy. I'm, I'm nosy? Nosy and really hard to surprise. <laughs> what did you do? Remember that bed and breakfast you showed me? The one in Cape Cod? The one in my romantic getaway book? Guess where we're spending Sunday. Cape Cod? We're going to Cape Cod? Wait, I have to work Monday. Wrong. I got cast cover for you. Now Pam breaks into a very wide grin. You little sneak. I love you. 
She kisses him as Greg kisses her back and beams an interior Logan International Airport baggage claim later. Pam stands waiting and watching with an empty empty luggage carousel with just her bag. Interior airport lost luggage counter. Same. Greg pleads his case to one of the two stone-faced clerks. Twelve hundred dollars total? Sir, you have to understand we have no way of verifying what was in your missing luggage. If anything. If anything, I told you there's a ring, a diamond ring, a ring that's worth a hell of a lot more than 1200 bucks. You take a bag containing jewelry. Can't talk that. Your airline made me check it. Look, I'm here for a wedding. Afterwards, I'm planning on proposing to my girlfriend with that ring. Well, sir, we have an excellent tracking system, so if you'll give me the address you're staying at. We're staying at her parents. I, I, don't, I don't know the address offhand. You don't know the address? Why would I? I've never met them. The clerk's trade looks, then clerk two turns to Greg. Wait, wait. Hold on. You never met her parents, and you're planning to propose? Right. <laughs> he topped it. And we go up interior airport rental car counter later. Greg and Pam stand behind a new mom and her fussing infant. Relax. You gave them the address. They'll send it when they find it. I mean, if they find it. Losers. The baby screeches in his ear. So what happens if they don't? The baby's really cranky now, crying, grasping gasping coughing oops it's too big uh mom tries burping the baby over her shoulder i guess i spend the weekend with just the clothes on my back yeah! oh, baby projectile vomits all over greg's shirt and he looks down and grins big and sarcastic exterior four lane highway overlooking scenic boston harbor day ford taurus Fats along in heavy traffic interior Taurus. Greg is driving, looks distracted at Pam, turning to him as they speed through an intersection. Cool. Do you realize we've hit every green light since we've left the airport? Tell me that's not a sign. It's definitely a sign. It means go. Uh, seriously, remember in The Great Gatsby when Robert Redford's out, like, out on his dock and just wondering if he should get back with, what's her name? Daisy. Uh, yeah, Pharaoh. Is he, um, right uh, across the water he sees the the blinky green light and you know what he does after that the sting <sighs> okay mr literal make a joke but right sign at the right time can change your life and only a fool would ignore them damn what that was our exit Sir, two lane rural suburban road later, the Ford winds its way into the suburbs. You're lucky you're not in the wedding party. My mom's gonna run, run us ragged. Uh, there's a family brunch, tuxedo, dress spinning, Kev's throwing a barbecue, there's a shower, rehearsal, rehearsal dinner. But that's not for the wedding party. Or that's for the wedding party. I'm not in the wedding party. Right. Which is why I just said, so Greg, were you even listening or were you still thinking about your bag? Honey, I was listening. Tuxes, barbecue, rehearsal dinner. Wow, <laughs> that's impressive. Greg, you want a cracker? Hey. Greg, that's a that's the difference between parroting it back and listening. I know, honey. I was listening. He trails off Pam size as Greg keeps driving. Stewardess did something. Exterior neighborhood row later, the Taurus rolls past a nice. The middle or, oh, that amazes me. It's in the middle class. There's houses inside the Taurus. Dina Ben <laughs> and Dina Burns. Our friends call her D, but don't do it because it'd be too weird. Gotcha. What am I turning? Not for a while. What else? Oh, and they really like games, so they'll probably bug us to play. Yippee! You know me in games. I know, but be a sport. It'll probably just be board games. The last board game I played was Candyland. I forgot Pat's a damn molasses swamp. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior of the Burns Home Road moments later, the Taurus is slowing now, rolling by bigger, nicer homes. Right. Uh, did I mention my dad's toupee? It's 
really his hair, but it just looks like a toupee. So don't stare. Okay. And try not to make any messes. My mom is incredibly anal. No jokes either. Cause, you know, since they, excuse me, no jokes either since she's never did them. And uh, just try to stay clear of discussions on politics or religion, blah, blah, blah. So we atheists do best. Ah, that's the last house on the left. Next through the Burns Home Day, 5 p.m. An idyllic colonial, two stories, white and black shutters, trimmed hedges, lush lawn. A trendy nylon flag hangs out in the front, wedding bells and a wedding cake on it. The Taurus turns into the drive on the side of the house, parks at the bottom next to the garage in the backyard lawn. Interior Taurus Greg kills the engine and then he and Pam both take a moment to find the, or to ready themselves. Deep breaths, anxious looks, and then Greg pulls out his shirt front and sniffs. Still smell it. Smell it? Smell? Mm. He pulls the shirt for her face, she waves him off. I don't need to smell it. It smells. Like what? Baby bark and breast milk. Outstanding. Hi, Pam's parents. I'm her boyfriend, Pepe Le Pew. <laughs> uh, as he and he opens his door exterior the tar seconds later pam holds one of her bags greg the other slams the trunk and then reaches into a soiled shirt pocket for a pack of camels as he shakes one out what are you doing i thought i'd have a quick one and i thought we discussed this one well, am outside greg cancer killed four of my grandparents if my parents know you smoke they will freak out give it and the pack he pulls out the pack hesitates and pam snatches them away and burns and holes into high onto the home's rooftop exterior where they land and slide down some shingles before stopping in a leaf club gutter beside a big elm tree exterior driveway that it or did you pack some too that's it gonna be a long weekend it's going to be a great weekend. You're going to meet my family and they're going to love you just like I love you, right? He nods, he nods and shrugs and gives them a little kiss. This is where the script gets fucked up and we jump forward in time a little bit. Pam <laughs> shoots him a panic look. Thanks a lot, script fly. Panicked look and as he drops his foot down. Oh, wait, this is me. Uh, oh, Milwaukee's nice. Good beer. Beer, right. Got, got plenty of that. Wasn't Jeffrey Dahmer from Milwaukee? God, that's sick, and you know that. Honey, a lot of people know that. It's true. Uh, my dad calls Dahmer the queer that made Milwaukee famous. Greg chuckles, and as Ben and Dina stare at Pam, slightly horrified switches subjects. So, Greg, how's your job? Good, Pam. Thanks for asking. Greg has one of those ridiculously high-paying jobs in television. No kidding. Doing what? I work for the Rita show. I don't think we've ever seen that. And what do you do for this Rita? I'm a producer. One of them, anyway. It's my job to come up with shows. Gets Ben's attention. Really? Have I got a show for you? Here we go. Ben's up now, heading for his TV VCR. Can tell you about the nanny cams? No, Dad, but... I'm moonlighting. Started a home surveillance company with Larry. Larry is, is Bob's... Uh, Debbie's Bob's father. Uh, actually, he's a stepfather, so I guess that makes him Debbie's stepfather-in-law-to-be. Uh, no one cares. Ben hits rewind on the tape deck and then plucks a big, dopey-looking teddy bear off a shelf. What does this look like to you? He tosses Greg a teddy, Greg looking slightly confused. Uh, a bear? Exactly. Ben flips on the TV, it flickers, and on the TV, a black and white image of Greg appears from the bear's POV. Smile, you're on nanny camera. Oh, right, I've heard of these. Inside's a mini spy cam with a 900 MHZ RF unit that transmits to a specialized battery-powered VCR. Why battery-powered? Because sometimes you need to spy where there's no electricity. Wow, sounds amazing. Greg flips the bear upside down looking for components. As he does, the bear's eyeball lens swings towards the sofa where Dean is sitting and on the TV now is a perfect panty shot of Dina's skirt. Fortunately, all eyes are on Greg. 
What we do, Greg, is rent them out to parents to keep an eye on their nanny, a little domestic spine. Which given bids field of work? Dana. Oh, come on, dear. We can tell, Greg. Ben works for the CIA. Oh, that's right. Pam mentioned that. Oops. And now, as Ben now shoots daggers at Pam away. Dad, come on. It's, it's no big deal. Oh, national security is no big deal. Ben, your secret is safe with me. Greg looks up to see Dina's crotch looming large on the TV screen. He yanks the bear up before anyone notices. I must say, it's never a dull moment being married to a spy. Sometimes Ben leaves at night and can't tell me where he's going or why, or the phone will ring and I'll leave to take it in another room and lock the door. Not to mention how he'd spy on me on my dates. Now, honey, I never spied. Observed is more like it. He smiles at Greg and winks. Well, Kevin and I got pretty sick of you observing us on the back porch. You can't blame a man for wanting to know what goes on inside his own house, now can you? Uh, Greg, my bear. <laughs> he gestures. Greg tosses him back at the teddy. Teddy is our biggest rental, but we also have cameras for houses that wouldn't have a stuff bear around. He takes a color brochure off the TV and hands it to Greg. We've got wall clocks, mirrors, smoke alarms. I'm even testing out a pinhole camera that fits completely inside an electrical outlet. And what's great is they're completely innocuous. You can hold one right up to your face and have no idea you're being watched. So wow. think you, do you think you can get us on your TV show? It could really be win-win. You'll get ratings and I get publicity. Probably true, Ben. Uh, but... Um... A nearby phone rings. Dina starts to rise. I'll get that. Uh, no, no. Oh, uh, Dina's... Enjoy your drink. I'm already up. I already forgot I was doing scene description. He starts for the kitchen, kitchen and Greg perks up. Okay, maybe, it's, maybe it's the airline. I'm sure it is. More poo-poos? Thanks, but I'm pretty poo-pooed out. <laughs> Across the room is an alcove. <laughs> Dina... <laughs> If that was amazing. <laughs> One marker board is covered with the wedding info, phone numbers of Florida skaters, etc. Another has a seating chart, a stack of place cards, sent by a computer, which Greg eyes. Nice desktop. MMX or just a premium? Or Pentium? You know, I, I don't know. Ben bought it at Christmas, so I, I could use it to plan my, the wedding. In fact, I just typed up the agenda for a weekend. I have it all planned right up to the vows. I just need to proof it. You gonna run a spell check? Well, I would if I knew how to do it. Oh, well, I'm computer literate. He's probably an expert. I'd be glad to show you. Interior kitchen. Ben shuts the swinging door behind him, grabs the phone. Hello? Uh huh. No, in the living room. I barely beat her to the phone. If she ever does, you just hang up quick, okay? So when are we getting together? Yeah, I think I can swing. He pulls a bottle of Collins mix from the nearby pantry. The pie right, fine. He screws the top off, starts pouring it down the sink. I'm excited too. See you in 10. As he finishes pouring the bottle out and hangs up into your living room, Pam and Dina look over Greg's shoulder as he hits enter. Okay, so it's scanning the document, looking for typos, and when it finds one, it'll even suggest a correction. Oh, no misspelled words found. How about that? Looks like you're a letter perfect typist, Dina. And re enters from the kitchen and heads for them. Oh, was it the airline, honey? Uh, no, wrong number. Uh, we're out of Collins mix. Oh, uh, you're kidding. I just bought some. Uh, no problem. I'll run to buy right. Hey, ben, mind if I tag along? I just realized my bag, uh, if it doesn't come in tonight, I'll need a few essentials. Oh, I, I'm sure it'll come. The airlines are on top of things. Stay, relax. I'm just thinking if it doesn't. Greg, can you pick me up a scrunchie? I think I forgot to pack mine. A scrunchie? You know, one of those terry cloth thingies I used to put my hair up. Honey, buy right has no scrunchies. Uh, at least they didn't last time I was there. Oh, why were you looking for a scrunchie? Ben, realizing his predicament, decides to gaslight her. I wasn't looking for kimchi, dear. What would I do with kimchi? Is it kimchi? A kimchi, a Korean sauerkraut. Why on earth would Byright have that? 
not kimchi, Dad. A scrunchy. Oh, well, they might have that. Are you going, Greg? Let's go. Big grins, jingles his car keys, and heads down the hall. Greg gets up, strokes Pam's hair, and smiles to Dina. Thanks a bit. He follows Ben, and then Pam turns to a beaming Dina. Well? Oh, Pam, he's wonderful. I knew you'd like him. As they slide into each other's arms embrace. Oh, yeah, this is where we go back in time. I think, right? I don't know. Exterior Ross Neighborhood Day, Ben's 1995 Buick Park Avenue rolls through suburbia. Oh no, this is regular time. Sorry. I digress. They ride in deafening silence. Greg struggling to strike up a conversation. Finally. All right, smooth. Big day Saturday, uh, expecting 100 guests. 100? It's a good sized crowd. Yep. This event's going to set me back 40 grand. Unbelievable. When Dina and I got married, we had a potluck reception in her old man's basement and two kegs of beer. But it worked out. Next month will be 30 years. 30. Wow. Congratulations. He notices Ben's keychain, a medallion with 30 on it. Your keychain? I'm oh, sorry. Anniversary gift? Oh, well, this, no. It's from work. A little gift they give you every decade. It's a breakaway keychain. So Ben yanks the medallion free and hands it to Greg. Greg eyes it and finds an inscription. To the HP. Is that your code name? Uh, nickname. During the Cold War, I got a reputation for being the agency's top interrogator. So some of the boys started calling me the HP, the human polygraph. There's not a liar alive I couldn't make look like goddamn Pinocchio. Hmm. <laughs> As Greg lets him do his bit of trivia sync and Ben slides a CD into the mm -hmm. cars player. You like Peter Paul and Mary, Greg? Me? Um, no, I don't. I mean, I don't really follow them. I know if I had a hammer and blowing in the wind. Pop the magic dragon comes on. Ben nods towards the CD. Pop the magic dragon. Right, right. Took me a while to figure that one out. You know, that it was a song about pot. What? This is clearly news to Ben, but Greg's committed, so. The puff the magic dragon meant to light up, take a hit. And to bury that in a kitty sing-along song. Wow. I mean, if anyone tried that today, they'd be crucified. Uh, but Pop was just the name of the boy's magical dragon friend. Are you a pothead, Greg? What? No, no. Why? Do I look like I'm into drugs? Because I'm not, I swear. I mean, sure, I've had offers. Who hasn't? But believe me, I just say no. I happen to agree with the late Mr. T when he said, dope is for dopes. <laughs> right on uh <laughs> hp stares then gives a little nod as if convinced uh though clearly he is not in as greg slumps in his seat and stares out the window mr t is not dead <laughs> he's with walt disney exterior by right superstore day greg and ben walk by the series of coin operated kitty rides and funhouse mirrors towards the store's sliding doors i'll be over by the pharmacy i'll meet you back out front here the doors slide open and they head inside. Interior by right and Greg turns one way, Ben the other. Then a few seconds later, Ben returns and slips out the entrance. Down, excuse me, down the aisle, Greg passes a display of kimchi before coming on a sign. All nicotine patches on sale and a totally empty shelf. He turns to a nearby pharmacy clerk. Do you have more nicotine patches? Oh, shit, I don't think I cast this. No, we have gum. Uh, you chew it. He points to the shelf of Nicorette gum. Greg takes a box. Thanks. Uh, what about scrunchies? He stops as he spies something outside the window. Greg's POV. Ouch, get off me. Uh, Ben's in the parking lot heading for, the idling, for an idling Lexus. Then the driver's door swings open and a woman in a tight knit steps out, blonde 40s, and hugs Ben. Greg squints, then spins to the clerk. Can you ring me up here? Exterior by right parking lot moments later, the woman, Carol, dangles a key and Ben's smiling face. Oh, here you go. One key to romance. <laughs> I can hardly wait. In the front of the store by the kitty rides. Greg, ouch, get down, please. Greg, uh, 
leads on the end of a news rack and watches from behind a pillar he's close enough to hear. Oh, are you sure she doesn't suspect? She's completely unaware. Good. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> no, I will. Bye, Carol. He gives her a peck. She smiles, gets back in her Lexus, and as she stares up and pulls away past the pillar, uh, something catches Ben's eye. It's the reflection of a two-foot-tall, three-foot-wide Greg seen from behind. Greg? Behind the pillar, Greg looks confused. How is he spotted? Then he spins and sees a short, fat Ben coming his way. The funhouse mirrors. He cringes, then lightning quick grabs a magazine sitting on top of a news track. As Ben rounds the corner, Greg's face is behind an issue of parenting. Greg. Greg whips it down, smiling as if nothing's happened. Hey, Ben. Ready to go? I've been ready. They're out of Collins. What are you doing back here? Oh, just reading up about... Turns it over the magazine to reveal an ad for... Oh, no. Pumps. Pumps? <laughs> Breast pumps. <laughs> for pumping breasts. Grew up on a farm. <laughs> he waits, praying he's fooled the HP a beat. And then Ben grunts, trips his car remote, and heads for the car as Greg drops the magazine, littering, and follows. He didn't even pay for it. Into your room's home dining room at night. Dinner looks like a Rockwell painting. A ceiling turns lazily above a beautifully adorned china covered table as it's picture perfect pot roast, bowls of fluffy potatoes, buttery vegetables, and smoking hot rolls. Greg and Ben sit admiring the spread as Pam lights the candles and Dina shoes away a hovering fly. Wow, everything looks wonderful. I was a lucky man the day I met Dina. I wish somebody would swat that sucker. Relax, Dad, it's not hurting anyone. So who wants to say grace, Pam? Mom, you always ask everyone and it always winds up being you. Not always, Ben, Greg. Thanks, but I've never done it. Never said grace? Interesting, well, let us pray. The, bre the three burns shut their eyes and bow their heads. Greg does the same, the fly buzzing around his brow. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this food we are about to receive. The fly lands on Greg's cheek. He swats, swipes at it, and the fly is hovering and circling over a bowl of cream spinach. Greg slowly late, raises a flat palm. And for the blessing us with the presence of our Pam and her Greg. And Greg doesn't even hear it. He's so focused on that fly. And for and so for all these things, we thank you, Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But before she can say amen, Greg swats, missing the fly, but hitting the spinach spoon's handle, catapulting a lump of green goose skyward. Greg winces, waiting for it to come down, but it doesn't. And as the startled burns pops, their eyes open and stare. The fly. I swatted the fly. Sorry. Pam shoots him a look. That, what were you thinking? And as he suddenly shrugs and puts the spoon back in the bowl, he notices at the burnstone that there's a gob of spinach hanging half off the edge of a rotating fan blade. Craig's eyes whip back to the table. Uh, well, gang, dig in. As they do, each grabbing a bowl, taking, passing, and as Ben hands Greg the meat platter. Never said grace. Huh? What really did you practice, Greg? Me. Actually, I'm. Uh... He's Christian. I mean, he's, he's sort of a Christian. Greg stares at her stunned as Dina turns his way. I'm, I'm not sure you could be sort of a Christian. I think you could either accept Jesus as Lord or you don't. Well, my, my parents were very religious. Oh, well, sure. You got to have faith to farm. To farm? Yeah, Greg here grew up on a farm. I thought you grew up in Milwaukee. I did. See, it wasn't a real farm. It was just our, our house was so big and red that when I was a little kid, it, it just seemed like a farm. And we had a lot of pets. So which one did you milk? Dad. Honey, he said he pumped milk. Greg, what have you ever milked? Uh, cats, actually. My what? sister's cat had kittens and I got bored one day, so I kind of just milked her I, I didn't know you could milk a cat 
Oh, yeah, you can milk anything with nipples. Well, I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? Dad! I'm just curious. Sure, Ben. I, I, I guess I could. Well, better me than Jinxie. Try it, he'll claw your blind. Sam pushes her glass of milk away. Can we talk about something else? Like what, Pam? Anything. Let's go back to religion or politics. What the hell? There's no need to swear, dear. Whop! A gob full of Spanish flies and splats on her forehead. Christ! The burns eye Greg is his face faint innocence. <laughs> Interior downstairs powder <laughs> room leader. Greg's <laughs> by the toilet, buckling his belt and open box of Nicorette on the counter. He plops a few pieces from their foil, pops them in his mouth, then crumples the box and drops it into an already paper-filled toilet he flushes. Then there's a problem. The toilet clogs. Water swirling as the level rises fast, about to overflow. Oh, God. Oh, oh no. Uh, Greg, on the door. we started. And easy on the paper, we're on a septic tank here. Okie dokie, Ben. Thanks. He yanks the shag rag away, lifts the top of the tank, and plunges an arm in, hoping to shut the flapper. No luck, and as the liquid reaches the brim of the bowl and Greg steps back, mortified to wait the flood, <laughs> the dam bursts. Instantly, the water is dropping, swirling and flushing away. Greg sighs, fully relieved as he pops nicotine gum in his mouth. And cheery of the family living room later, it's Scrabble time! The game is underway. Dina, one eye on the board. I love this game. Um, one eye on the board works frantically pulling out stacks of wedding placards as Ben watches as Pam build on an E. Greg watches too, slumping in his chair, not into it. What's more, Jinx is below the table, rubbing against Greg's shins. He gently boots the cat away. Q-U-I-N-O-X. Equinox. Not bad, huh? Used up the Q and the X. Pretty lucky, honey. Try skill, Dad. 30, 48, 62... Dina shifts from place cards to score pad to write 62. Uh, Pam's ahead. Uh, your turn, Greg. Greg nods, chewing his nicotine gum. Pam notices. Gum? I want some. No, I mean, sorry. Uh, last piece. Uh, well, thanks for sharing and for remembering to get my scrunchie. Greg shrugs, then continues to eye the board and his tiles as Pam sips a Pepsi and watches Dina do a place card. Need any help there, Mom? Oh, thanks, Han. But I want the writing on all the place cards to match. Anal. Pam turns freaked, but then he sees Greg's just spelled anal on the board. He looks up, reads her expression. What? That's a word? I know it's a word, Greg. Those W-I-M-P-Y. Better step up and play some real words if you want to beat the scrabbling burns of Boston. Okay, Ben, I'll, I'll try. He smiles and nods, then looks to Pam for a little sympathy. She gives a subtle shrug with her eyes as Greg pulls three new tiles and slides them onto his tile holder. He eyes his new lot, W-J-O-L-B-O-N-S. Whoopee. Then a hems to Dina, mm -hmm. who is now busily filling out cards in pink. Oh, my turn again. She gives a quick glance on the board and then scoops up six of her seven tiles and builds them on a J. Highlight. <laughs> Sorry, but I had all those A's. And then she goes back to her place cards. Greg smiles, nods, and tries rearranging his tiles into words. Owl, OJ, BS, this game sucks. Boy, Mom, you seem pretty calm considering how close it's getting. Oh, I'm plenty nervous. But remember, I've been playing this little gathering for a year now. And if you'll recall, it's not the first wedding she's planned. He shoots Pam a wink and Pam shoots daggers. Dad. Oh, what? Suddenly it's a big secret? A vellum. It's a membrane. Go, Pam. Uh, Pam looks to Greg and suddenly it dawns on him. Pam, you were engaged? That depends on your definition. Gee, I don't know. Guy Niels proposes, gives you a diamond ring? Hmm. It was a nice ring, too. Huge. Who were you engaged to? Who else? Kevin. Kevin. High school boyfriend Kevin. 
the guy before you, Kevin, but we never set a date. And a month later, I thought better out of it and back out. Kevin, your turn. How come you never told me this? How come you never told me you milked a cat? Because it was a long time ago. Well, so was this. Greg? What? Oh, sorry. Uh, he shuffles, oops, my, 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 he shuffles his lame tiles around. Slob shuffles again, jowls, shuffle, bowels. Same day rule. <laughs> Greg smiles wanely at Ben. Ben shuffles again, suddenly, low jobs is lined up mm-hmm. on his tile rack and on the board, there's a nice fat B to build on. Well, let's go, Mr. Monosyllabic. I can use all of them, right? You're gonna play all seven tiles. <laughs> the first return starts placing them. Well, come on, Dana. Oh, B. God damn it, Dana. That's Pam B. L. O. Blow! Pam peeks at his rack and then the J O B S and her eyes bug as Greg scoops up the last four tiles. Fish. Blowfish. Good word, Greg. She knocks her Pepsi onto the table, foaming. Polo washes across the board, sweeping tiles away. Oh, that's horrible to do to a game. And Dina cowers over her place cards, and Ben and Greg jump up to avoid getting wet. Pam shrugs. Whoops. Exterior back porch night. Greg follows Pam outside to the screen and back porch as she shuts the door and the house behind them. Low drops, Greg. Low drops. Honey, he called me monosyllabic. He was teasing. That's why we play these games. So dad can tease. I don't do I hate board games. Great. Well, next time we'll have to play something a little less embarrassing, like strip twister. Low drops, what were you thinking? Same thing you were thinking when you said I was sort of a Christian. Sorry, but I am in no hurry to bring up your utter contempt for religion. I don't think my Irish Catholic mother is going to appreciate it. Yeah, she might scream out, Christ! You hit her in the head with spinach. That was an accident, Pam. Come on. He moves moves closer, reaching out to touch her crossed arms. Ah, Sorry. It's just the news about you and Kevin really threw me. I know they will. Exterior burns home front porch seconds later. Greg and Pam trade one last look as Pam reaches for the doorbell. <laughs> this is this oh, is where we go back. I was like, what? Pam. Lost. <laughs> Greg and Pam trade one last look as Pam reaches for the doorbell. Okay, Ben and Dina burns, grinning. Oh, hey, we haven't met yet. Ben's a beer of a man, late 50s, large teeth, high hair. Dina's a bit younger, fit, attractive, constantly sporting a smile. Both parents dip out and sandwich hug Pam. Oh, hello, Hi, sweetie. Pam. <laughs> Dina kisses Pam and then immediately licks oh licks okay I thought that was been somewhere else licks a finger and starts wiping lipstick off Pam's cheek mm-hmm. Pam what you do to your hair it's different since last time I don't know mom washed it Ben turns to Greg hand out hello Greg I feel like we've already met do you prefer Gregory Ben Burns welcome thanks it's great to meet you too again Greg, I'm Dina. Hi, Dinah. Dina. Dina. Uh, saw that one coming. Oh, don't worry. It happens all the time. What do you got in your shirt, Greg? He got spit up by a baby. Oh, he didn't. Oh. Yeah, Mom, he did. Well, as they say, spit happens. <laughs> Dad. And did you only pack the one shirt? What? Uh, oh, no, uh, the airline. Um, the airline lost Greg's bag. They didn't. Yeah, Mom, they did. <sighs> I'm not surprised. Airlines have gone to hell since deregulation. Oh, don't start, dear. I'm sure it'll turn up. In the meantime, if there's anything you need to borrow, just ask. Well, that's right. Mi casa es su casa. Thanks, Ben. You too. Greg smiles, realizing that he made no sense. Dina swings the door open wider and gestures. Oh, 
well, check your feet and come on in. We've got the bar set up and I have some poo-poos browning in the oven. They start to shuffle inside single file. Uh, poo-poo, in case you're wondering, is Hawaiian for hors d'oeuvre. Which I guess is French for pretentious snack. Ben and Tina swap enlightened looks. Oh, pretentious snack. You know, I never knew that. Why would you? We're not French. And as the door slams interior of the foyer, continue as Greg looks around. The home is nice, comfortable, and everywhere it's immaculate. A Persian cat runs to them. Mr. Jinx! Ben spins and scoops up the meowing cat. How's my Jinxy? How's my pal? Greg, meet Jinx. Jinx, Greg. Hi, Jinx. Jinxy here is strictly an indoor cat, Greg, so be sure not to let him out. No problem, Ben. To a cat lover, too. <laughs> oh, Greg hates cats. Hates cats. Whoops, Pam instantly shoots Greg a sorry look. I wouldn't exactly say I hate them. He's just more of a dog lover. Well, you can love dogs and not hate cats. That's true. <laughs> it's just, I, I grew up around dogs, and to me, they're just more social. Cats, cats are great. They're just more into themselves. Jinx meows. See, everything they say begins with me. <laughs> is that uh, the lamb, George? It's, it's Mr. Jinx. What are you talking Meryl about? Meryl Sheep? Meryl yes. Sheep? Yeah. Uh, ben and Tina stare, not understanding. Then Jinx meows and bolts from Ben's arm down the hall a beat, and then foursome follows. Greg and Pam trading anxious looks. Do you know he actually taught that cat to use the bathroom? I got a kit, a litter box that fits inside the bowl. And once he learned to get up on the seat, I nixed the box and now he does his business just like you and I would, Greg. Actually, uh, Ben, I taught myself to use a litter box. You have cats, but you hate cats. Mom, he was making a joke. Oh, I see. Yes, that's funny. Uh, she smiles <laughs> awkward. They reach the base of the stairwell. Ben. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes, thank you. Greg, give me those bags and I'll run them up to Pam's room. Well, oh, that's okay, Ben. Thanks. Dad, pop into Denny's room and get a shirt for Greg to wear, please. Uh, what kind of shirt you like, Greg? Just whatever's clean. Thanks. Clean from Denny's room? Good luck. <laughs> ben continues up the stairs. Pam turns to Dina. Where's Denny at, Mom? Oh, a friend's. Since Deb and Bob aren't due till tomorrow, it'll just be us four for dinner. Pot roast. Pot roast sounds delish. Oh, good. I'm so glad we finally got to meet you, Greg. Pam's been bragging about you nearly a year now. I'm a big fan of Pam's, too. Should be. She's a real catch. Oh, Mom, I'm not a fish. Oh, grow some skin. It was a compliment. Greg, wasn't... Was that not a compliment? Well, I'm playing Switzerland here. A distant kitchen buzzer sounds. Oh, sounds like my poo poos are brown. And I, <laughs> my poo poos brown. And hon, I didn't mean anything. Ah, <laughs> uh, I know, Mom. It, it's it's okay. Dina smiles that suburban smile of hers before turning and heading towards the kitchen. Pa Pam and Greg relax. That was fairly painful. I told you to go easy on the jokes. Okay, but I was just trying to make up for the Greg Hates Cats fiasco. Sorry that slipped, but it's no biggie. You did good. You did fine. You think they like me? Of course. What's not to like? He grins, she grins as they steal a little kiss. Century burns home living room moments later. A Zamfir CD wafts from the bookshelf stereo as Ben plunks two drinks down in front of Pam and Greg. Greg now looking a tad self-conscious in his butthole surfer's t-shirt. Oh, mm -hmm. so Pam, how's the market out there? Picking up. Sold a condo last week. <gasps> oh, wonderful. And Greg, are you a native Chicagoan? Oh, uh, no. Actually, I'm, I'm from Milwaukee. She leans back, or he leans back, resting a foot on the coffee table's edge. Greg, it is so silly to be jealous. I'm not jealous. I don't even know the guy. I just didn't think you were ever that serious with anybody. It couldn't have been that serious or we would have gotten married. 
Maybe I'm trying too hard. I just really want your parents to like me. I know, and they will, because I love you. They know it, and so they have no choice. Now, come here, mister. Ma Ma Manos. Mono, somebody help. Monosyllabic. Monosyllabic. Good God and fuck. Monosyllabic. All right, come here, Mr. Monosyllabic. Can't watch a kiss. She pulls him close as they hug and swap little kisses. Is that That's my rap name, little kisses. Interior Pam's old bedroom. Now a modest guest bedroom. Pam is in undies unpacking her bag. Greg's in a teal Victoria's Secret robe moping. You get it before them. How would, how would they know? Greg, we've been through this. Parents' house, parents' rules. What about Dr. Bob and Debbie? When they're here, do they share a bed? Maybe, but we're not exactly Bob and Deb, now are we? They're engaged and living together. We practically live together. Your mom knows if you're not at home uh, at night to, to call my place. What does she think I have, bunk beds? Greg, when you think of my parents, think 1950s sitcom. Think Ward and June, <laughs> think Ward and June Cleaver, okay? They just don't think unmarried people should be fornicating under their roof. Which is why Ward, Ward. got a love nest. Ward. What? Nothing. Uh, so where am I sleeping? Interior Debbie's room night. May as well be Barbie's room. A lacy canopy bed, pink flowery wallpaper, white wicker furniture, and a dozen or so still wrapped wedding gifts, gifts piled high against a wall. I can't sleep here. Why Pam not? and Greg stand in the doorway. Again, why not? Look at it. It's wall-to-wall -wall estrogen. I'll wake up with breasts. <laughs> like, it's just so personal. And I don't know Debbie. She doesn't know me. And it's her unopened gifts, her canopy bed, her eyelid dust ruffle. Her eyelid dust ruffle? You're secretly gay, aren't you? Yes, and sleeping here without me. Seriously, it's too weird. Can I just sleep somewhere more guesty? It's late, Pam sighs. Interior downstairs, den later, a paneled room, cluttered with books, a desk, and cluttered shelves, walls full of framed photos, a bathroom off to the side, a door to the back porch, and on the other. Greg lies on a made-up sofa bed, patting the thin mattress. Her sofa bed, it's not half bad. You can barely feel the metal bar jutting into your spine. You wanted guesty. Greg sits up and notices a series of framed photos on the wall. They're all of Mr. Jinx posted or posed and wearing various outfits, e.g. a Santa cap, a Red Sox cap, sunglasses, etc. Your parents really need grandkids. I'm sure Debbie will get right on it. Anyway, there's the bathroom right there. I can eat it, a sink, shower, and a toilet. But don't use the toilet because it's never working right. Gotcha. And Greg, I know tomorrow mom has all sorts of plans for the wedding party, but I was talking to her and she said, you're welcome to join us. Thanks, but I'm going to stick to my original plan of lay low, especially given my less than stellar start. Sure. It looks like I'm abandoning you. Nah, I'll be fine. I think I'll drive into Boston, do some sightseeing, see the old uh, North Church, Harbor, the place they bake the beans. Okay, then. Sleep well, honey bunny. She smiles, bends, and they share a kiss. Pam turning, leaving without quite shutting the door. A beat, and Greg goes over to Ben's desk, grabs the phone, and then he pulls a card from his wallet and dials. You've reached the last luggage department. We are presently closed. Normal business hours are... Greg hangs up the phone, bummed in the eyes and the nearby shelf. It's full of spy cams, smoke alarms, clocks, teddy bears, and the prototype of the outlet cam Ben mentioned earlier. Greg slowly walks towards them, looking self-conscious, bending and angling to see whatever lens there may be. He picks up the outlet camera, eyeing the mini RF unit on the back. He then turns it back so it's facing him again. As he puts an eye up on one of its holes, a toilet flushes. Startled, Greg drops the spy cam. It hits the floor and breaks off. Greg gasps in, and Mr. Jinx strolls around the cracked bathroom door. Jesus. <laughs> then meows and bolts out the din door. Uh, Greg takes a beat to catch his breath, then drops to the floor and picks the cracked back of the outlet cam snaps together for the best he can gingerly places it back on the shelf as he starts back to the sofa bed 
He checks out the wall full of photos of Pam as a baby, the four Burnses posing beside uh, Lincoln Mark III, school photos, teenage Pam, preteen Debbie, Pam in torn 80s flash dance garb holding a young boy, Denny. Then Greg sees an entire series of photos of Pam and a handsome young guy. They're caroling at Christmas, sunning on a beach. Ben has his arm around the guy on a golf course. Ben, Dina, Pam, and the guy tour Italy. The guy hugs a kitty. Mr. Jinx, finally, Pam and the guy cut a cake. Not a wedding cake, just one that says, happy birthday, Kevin. Greg eyes the photo with his face mirrored in the glass. Then he sighs his robes to his BH surfer's shirt and his undies, and he kills the light. Fade out. Fade up. The interior burns home morning. Sun's up. Guns up. Uh, I don't know why it said that. Uh, another rental car out front, a Cadillac. Interior of the dark and downstairs den, same. Greg lies twisted in the sheets of the sofa bed. His Calvin's crawling high. Uh, sounds drift in and da da bleh, dishes clinking, voices laughing. He sits up, rolls over, squints to Krusty's eyes um, at his watch on the floor. 9.35 a.m. Shit! Interior kitchen, seconds later, the kitchen's ablaze in the bright morning sun. The table crowded shoulder to shoulder for a big family breakfast. Ben, Dina, and Pam are there, laughing and eating Belgian waffles. Across them, enjoying perfect omelets are Debbie Burns and Bob Banks. Uh, Ken and Barbie in the flesh. Um, they're a handsome, wholesome, and perfect matching pair, and they're sitting so close, they're nearly on the same seat. Beside them, um, steeled oats and fresh fruit are Bob's folks, Larry and Linda Banks, fit tan, quiffed, and bubbling. And so I asked the man if it burns when he urinates, and he said, peace me. I never tried to light it. Everyone roars at Linda's antidote. You know, looks at her eyes or watch. Oh, God, Bob, when does Andy's flight land? You know, I don't know, but he said he'd be here for breakfast, so... He stops as he spies Greg peering around the corner. Well, look who's up. Greg, right? Good, Good morning, morning Greg. Greg. Good morning, Greg. Greg leans out in his BS robe, voice raspy from sleep. <laughs> oh, I'm also Larry. Oh, boy. Looks like somebody had a little visit from the hair fairy. <laughs> it's true. Greg does have a bad case of Gumby-esque pillow hair. He nods, smiles, and smooths his cowlick a sport. Pam scoots her chair back and gets up. Everybody, this is Greg. Greg, that's Debbie. She offers her hand. As Greg goes to shake it, he notices a large diamond ring weighing down her finger. It's far, far, far bigger and brighter than the stone he bought for Pam. Nice to meet you, Debbie. And that's Dr. Bob. But please call me Bob M.D. <laughs> <laughs> Bob's words. And that's Bob M.D.'s parents, Larry and Linda Banks. They're from Salt Lake, and not so coincidentally, they're both surgeons. They're both surgeons. Now cut that out. <laughs> He makes scissors with his hand and cuts the air as he actually gets laughs too. He stole that from Uncle Joey. Easy crowd. Pleased to meet you. I think I'll head upstairs uh, now and have a little visit with the, uh, the shower fairy. No one laughs. Greg manages a smile before giving a little wave and retreating to the hallway. Enter your hallway just outside the kitchen, continuous where Pam follows, giving him a little smooch. He's so handsome. I'm just late. Late? Why didn't you wake me? Because when I checked on you about an hour ago, you were out cold. And I know how you like to sleep in there. Yeah, but not when I'm a guest. Oh, sorry. Good news, though. The airline called. They have your bag, and it should be here later today. It's okay? Wasn't open or anything? They didn't say, so it must be fine. That's great. I mean, now I can start feeling like myself again. In the meantime, just grab some more clothes from Denny's room. He should be getting up soon. Dina's within earshot pouring people fresh orange juice. Oh, he should be getting up now. He's going to be an usher and we have him very busy. Great, wake him. Uh, okay. I'll shower, wake Denny, dress, and be right down. Bye, hon. 
and he plants one on her. Interior steamy bathroom moments later, Greg, wet haired in a towel, leans over the sink, struggling to shave with Pam's round flicker razor, her cosmetic bag and deodorant out on the counter before him. Interior outside, hallway to newsroom later, Greg, back in the girly robe, knocks on the door. Penny? He cracks the door and leans in. Interior Denny's room, a dark, cluttered sty lit only by the way of the sun peeking through some windblown blinds and the unmade bed, no Denny. Hello? Greg looks around, then satisfied Denny's not there. He enters, heading for the ransacked walk-in closet and dresser, opens the door, finds some clean boxers and just he strips down to his birthday suit, a head shoves through the blinds. It's Denny. Greg cups the wadded up boxers to his crotch. Denny! Out of my room, dickness! He sweeps the blinds aside to reveal he's standing on the garage roof. And as he bends and starts climbing in, Greg spins and quickly slides the shorts on as Denny falls through the window frame with a thud. He then slowly gets to his feet. He's in jeans, a dirty tee, a jean jacket, and despite being all of 15, he is Greg size. Denny, hi, I'm Greg, Pam's boyfriend. She said I should. Are you wearing my boxes? Yes. See, the, the stupid there and lost my bag, so I needed to borrow clothes. Then borrow dad's. They'd be too big on me. And that's my problem. Cause... Fine. Okay, I'll take them off. It's cool. It's cool. Wear them. Uh, wear my boxers, in fact. You just uh, keep that pair. He grabs a small can of OZM deodorizer from a dresser, starts spritzing himself from head to toe. You tell him I wasn't there? What? No. In fact, your mom asked me to come up and wake you. No shit. Righteous. He pulls Visine from his pocket and starts putting drops in. So you're from Chicago. That's in uh, Michigan, right? Illinois. You sure? Greg lets this one hang for a moment then. Check this out. Made it myself. Pretty good stuff. He nods to the another window where the length of a surgical tubing hangs between a pair of stingray handlebars bolted to a stand. It looks like a big slingshot, only it's a... Water condom capulet. Catapult. Catapult, excuse me. Sorry, I've had a long night. If two guys pull it back, you can nail the church playground two blocks over. Rad? Uh, Danny, can I grab more clothes? I mean, if you want to pick them out for me, that's that's fine. Jesus, want me to dress you too? Grab whatever you want. Just none of my concert t-shirts, especially my tool hole bush. <laughs> wait, wait. He pushes past Craig into the closet, reaches to a high shelf and pulls down a stack of older shirts. He grabs the first one on the top and tosses it to Greg. Right on. It's a Millie Vanilli World Tour 91T with a silk screen rendering of two dancing dreadlock shysters. Denny pulls on a pair of black polyester slacks, tags still on them from a hanger, grabs a pair of black dress socks from a dresser, and tosses them both to Greg. You're set. Rock on. Then pushes by him to fling open the bedroom door. And stay out of my room, okay? Greg walks, hops to the door, putting slacks on. No problem. Thanks. Hey, thanks for waking me. Interior kitchen layer. Greg picks up the dregs from breakfast while all around him everyone looks stressed as Bob talks on the phone. Andy, come on. We understand you just feel better, okay? Thanks. We'll mail you some cake. Bye, pal. I can't believe it. Truly. Oh, poor Andy. Sorry, I forgot. You're fine, poor Andy. Oh, ask him if he can fly in tonight. Mom, his back is out. It took him eight hours to crawl to the plane. So what does all this mean? It means we don't have two ushers. This hangs in the air for a moment before Pam chimes in. Greg can do it. As Greg looks up mid shoe all eyes upon him and Terry living your moments later. Dean is by her computer handing everyone a one page printed itinerary. Greg looking less than thrilled. Okay, people, this is our itinerary for the next two days. It takes us from this morning through the wedding right up to Bob and Daddy's departure for their honeymoon. Greg and Pam, either itineraries, it's full page, single space and broke it down in half hour increments. Okay, now 
I know we're a big group and there's lots to do and not a lot of time, but if the wedding is going to be a success, then we all need to, that we know it can, that we, if the wedding is going to be a success, we all know it can be, then there cannot be any deviation, no deviation from the schedule. None. Is that clear? Clear as an Eskimo artery D. Good. Any questions? What are we doing about my tuxedo? They'll alter Andy's. Anyone else? About the rehearsal dinner, exactly what kind of food do they serve at the Surf and Turd restaurant? He holds the agenda and points Dina Gapes. <gasps> what? Give me that. Give them back. She starts to snatch them out of people's hands. Mom, come on. It's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, we know it's the Surf and Turd. I thought you proofed this for me. Oh, I snapped to Greg. He stammers. I, I, I did. I, your spell check just missed it. How could it miss it? It's, it's a computer for God's sake. And you said you were an expert. Mom. Well, didn't actually miss it. For whatever reason, the word is in your computer's dictionary. And well, you happen to spell turd right. Gemma. <laughs> And Dina shoots Denny daggers, thunderclaps um, on the front porch moments later. Rain, one after the other, they make for the driveway, shielding themselves from the downpour. Where the hell did this come from? Radio said it should clear by noon. Oh, you better. We have that barbecue and swim party over at Riley's. Who's Riley? Bob's best friend and the best man. Pam comes up behind Greg, tosses him a lined windbreaker. Denny, I'm lending Greg your jacket. Whatever. But when Denny sees exactly what jacket his eyes bug, in the driveway, Ben swings the Buick doors open, Larry the cans, and then Dina hustles up, toting a tote bag. Men in one car, women in the other. What? Why? Oh, I'm taking the women to the dressmakers and you're taking the men. Check your agenda. Oh, right. Uh, men, we're off to uh, the tuxedo ship. Exterior, the tuxedo ship day. <laughs> See, that was funny. The Cadillac's out front, still raining. Interior tuxedo ship. Bob, Ben, and Larry stand in a three-way. Ooh, they're having a three-way. Beaming and looking smart in top hats and gray morning coats. Nice, huh? I feel like a movie star. Well, that reminds me. Greg's in the biz. Yeah, what do you do, Greg? Get down, please. I get down. Nearby, yeah. Nearby a changing curtain, Denny finishes dressing as Greg starts to unwrap the plastic from Andy's tux. I work on a talk show in Chicago. And he's going to get a budding business, a little free publicity. You mean the nanny cams? Terrific. Actually, we need to discuss that. See, we've done some similar shows. He stops to see Denny sniffing the air around him. What, oh, Reeves, you wearing cologne? No, it's Pam's secret. You know, strong enough for a man. But made for a homo? Wow. Puts his top hat on, whips the curtain aside and exits, and Greg shakes his head and starts to undress. He bumps a chair with someone's belongings on it, and a wallet slides to the floor. Greg picks it up just as Bob comes to the curtain, stops and squints. Why do you have my wallet? Oh, is this yours? It it fell. It fell. Yeah, I bumped the chair and here. Hands the wallet. Bob's still looking concerned. I didn't open it, really. I believe you. Bob smiles, puts the wallet back on the chair, starts to get undressed as Drake starts to pull on pants. Hey, Bob. Thanks for having me in the wedding party. I'm really honored. I know it means a lot to Pam. No problem. It worked out well. We we need two ushers, and I didn't want to tap Riley. To tap Riley, he had to do. You know. So, how come Riley's not here? Is he not wearing a tux? Actually, we're matching his tux. He he bought a while. He bought one a while ago, and I liked it so much. I found us the same one. Trent, they're nice, huh? Yours look great. Puts the jacket on and turns to the full-size mirror. The sleeves and cuffs are close, but the fit is very tight. 
but I think I need some tailoring. Uh, suddenly, the curtain whips open and an elderly smiling owner leans in. Ah, uh, well, s step outside here, young man, and let's have a look at you. Mm. Well, uh, your sleeves and cuffs are perfect. Seems to fit like a glove. Actually, it feels uh, tight. See, I wear a 42 regular with a 32-32 pant. Uh, maybe we could find me another one, or... Hmm, I have no other one. Not in that color. I, I can take it out a little. Better make it a lot. Because right now, I can't even touch my toes. He starts to maneuver, and as he does, rip the jacket and pants split down the back, and as the owner of the others trades solemn looks into your tech shop moments later, Grant Stan Grant Greg stands there, his boxer in his boxers, and the owner and his tailor examine the open back tucks. The two men turn and shake their heads glumly at the anxious Ben and Larry. Great. We do. He can wear mine. Hell, he's wearing all of my other clothes. Then he piped down and go change. Denny smirks and heads back for the curtain. And it's not my fault. It was tight. I honestly don't care whose fault it is. The wedding is tomorrow. You've ruined your tux, and now it's up to me to call Dina and explain. Who's got an itinerary? I need the number for the dressmakers. There's one in, in my pants pocket. Behind the curtain, Denny has Greg's windbreaker off the hook and is going through one of the pockets when Bing comes through the curtain behind him. Denny startles, drops the jacket. A number of blue tip matches tumble out along with a Ziploc bag of doobies. They gape. Rolling doobie. Uh, wow, Greg is a total stoner. I knew it. <laughs> Pop the magic dragon. Exterior Boston, Suburban Street Day, still pouring. The caddy and the Buick pass a River Rock mailbox marked Riley. The wind up along, or they wind, a uh, fucking English man, they wind up a long private drive, exterior Riley's driveway. They motor by rows of finely trimmed hedges and rose gardens, the rain tapering off until, there we go. Exterior circular, circular drive of Riley's colonial day. The sky is blue, the sun is bright, dew glistens on the flower beds and the lawn. It's like a different happy world. By the front door, the car doors open and the family slide out, basking in the sweet air and sudden sunshine. The sun. What luck. Luck? Come on, Riley planned this. Wouldn't surprise me. Dina, not quite her cheery self, pops the Buick's trunk. Ben, bring the tech leaders over and we'll put them with the dresses in our car. A few yards away, Pam reunites with Greg, a peck, and... Is your mom real upset? No. What'd she say? <sighs> that Denny will just have to be the usher for both sides, and the head table's gonna have to be an odd number and look freakish. This isn't my fault. The tux didn't fit. If it's anybody's fault, it's that Andy guy for not showing up. I know, but try telling my mom that. Dina walks towards them, toting Texas, and she smiles at Greg. Oh. Greg, don't worry about the tuxedo. Something was bound to go wrong. After all, all weddings have their one thing and your thing was our thing, but it's behind us now. So let's just forget it and move on. <clears throat> With a Stepford smile, she puts the tuxes in the Buick, pulls out a tote bag and calls to the others. People, people, it's 1215. We're a little behind. So have fun, eat, drink, be merry, but be ready to leave by two. Uh, Ma, you packed me, me a suit and towel? Just a suit. Kevin has towels. Kevin? I am also. Oh, yes. Hey, hey! Welcome, everybody! That's hey. your best going, Will. Kevin. Riles. <laughs> Where's your Owen Wilson <laughs> turtleneck, dude? <laughs> Here you go. Travis is a liar. Kevin Riley, 32, strolls over in swim trunks and a cropped tee. He's the same guy we saw in the photos, only he's improved with age. 
better looking Tanner buffer as Greg shoots a look at Pam's way. Bob back claps Kevin. Hey, Riley buddy. Robert, Debra, big day, huh? Last one as a Burns. And the last is a single woman, so where's my male stripper, Kev? <laughs> Maybe after Bob has a few brews. Oh, you'd like that, huh? <laughs> Miles? Air kisses Kevin before Kevin moves on to Ben and Dina. Double B and D, it's been a while. Been too long. Aww, Hi, Kevin. Kevin. Uh, Kevin kisses Dina on the lips. Wow, and that's okay. Then does the same to Ben. Greg squints and watches as Kevin moves to the banks. Larry, Linda, looking lovely. Thanks, Riley. And you. And you. Denny scratches his cheek with his middle finger and grins. Beavis, butt head. He lightly cuffs the back of Denny's head and then turns to Pam and Greg. Pam's smiling as Kevin's blue eyes pierce her. Hey, Peanut. Hey, yourself. Kevin, this is Greg. Greg is uh, Pam's friend from Chicago. Hi, town. Welcome to Bean Town. Thanks, you too. Yeah, I've done it again. Uh, Jimmy's not again. Well, the sun's out, coals are hot. And the pool's Luke. I am your father. So if you're up for a swim and some mm -hmm. baby meek you, mm -mm. we're there. No. <laughs> Worst mm -hmm. attempt at a joke ever. They but all start to head down the cobble path toward the sound of the outdoor stereo. You just like giggled like a girl and sparkling blue pool. Kev, your house looks incredible. I can't believe how different it is. Care for a quick tour? <laughs> a star tour? Stop it. No, Stop. just don't. Interior Riley's house, home theater room. Kevin hits a key on a laptop computer controller and projection screen lowers from a slot in the ceiling. And as the lights in the room slowly dim, Kenny Loggins' danger zone booms. A costly kit clip from Top Gun fills the screen. F-16 straight dive and soar in the most impressive surround sound. Kevin bops his head to the beat, then turns to Pam and yells over the thumping soundtrack. I feel the need. The need for speed. Yeah, you were supposed to say that too, dipshit. And as they turn to the high, just like in the movie, incredibly nice country kitchen, huge with the latest appliances they stroll through. Kevin, this, what is exactly that you do? I mean, besides make tons of money. Tons, huh? He's in investment banking and he writes a monthly column for Forbes. Yeah, but that's just my day job. Let me <laughs> do what I'm really into. Interior woodshop, an immaculate carpenter's lair. Oh, I forgot about the gazebo. Uh, with band saws, jigsaws, routers, sanders, and a number of projects, furniture, carvings, and various stages of completion. Hey, someone got an A in woodshop. Huh real life i didn't and i've got two thumbs to prove it he flashes two thumbs up and then points and aims two pistols at pam and a wink pam laughs a little too hard and craig notices a number of <laughs> photos hanging in a dust free around the workshop <laughs> then but the renaissance man how'd you get into carpentry carpentry hmm. well i'd have to say jesus he was a carpenter and i figured if you're going to follow in someone's footsteps then who better than christ's Greg nods, clears his throat, and Pam points off screen. Is that the wedding gift? There, just outside the shop's double French doors. Exterior, adjacent brick courtyard and gazebo is a large canvas tarp covering something over 10 feet tall. Kevin, Pam, and Greg step outside and walk towards it. Yep, but, but the last coat of... Uh, Lacquer? Lacquer. La oh, yeah, lacquer. Lacquer. Yeah, on the morning. No, no, lacquer. Lacquer. Oh, lacquer. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so. My, okay. On this You're morning fine. before the rain. <laughs> he gives the tarp to reveal a birchwood arch ornately carved with roses, doves, cherubs, and hearts. Pam gasps. Kevin, it's incredible. And, and you eat the roses? 
Deb's favorite. And, wow, are those holes for candles? Exactly. And later, and later on, they'll catch rainwater and make tiny bird baths. Oh. Pam shakes her head and stares, completely awed. At the risk of sounding really, really stupid, what is it? The altar. I'm going to take it to the burns. Have the floors decorated, and tomorrow Bob and Deb will meet beneath it to become man and wife. And later, when they buy a home, it'll go in their garden. How long something like this take? Let's see. They've been engaged three weeks, five hours a day, about a hundred hours, seventy, which isn't bad considering I carved it all by hand. So. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause here and say. They've been engaged three weeks, and they're planning this elaborate wedding in three weeks. Jesus Wait, Christ, she's pregnant. I just surprised her. They turn and look down a wood bath. Bob and Debbie splash fight in the pool while others drink and snack at the buffet table. I better go play host. Why don't you put your suits on and head down? Suits? Damn. I don't suppose your mom packs an, packed an extra one? The airline lost my luggage. Oh, man. Never check your bag, but guess what? I can lend you a suit. Great, Kev. Thanks. He smiles at her wings and heads in the house. His great turns to Pam looking slightly miffed. Want to tell mm. me why you didn't tell me? Tell you what? That we'd be sharing the entire weekend with your former fiancé. What are you talking about? I told you there was a barbecue here. When? When did you tell me that? I don't know. But I know I did. <laughs> Greg, everyone's been talking about this. It's on the damn agenda. I barely read the damn agenda. If you recall, I was supposed to be playing tourist all day today before somebody volunteered me to usher. You should have volunteered. You wouldn't have scored. You would have scored some points. Don't you want my parents to like you? Look. Here, barbecue at Riley's. Right, only you forgot to mention it. Riley is Kevin. You're Kevin. I didn't forget anything, Greg. It's not my fault you don't remember my ex-boyfriend's last name. And it's also not my job to remind you. And I can't help it if Kevin is Bob's best friend and happens to be the one who introduced Bob to my sister. Think fast. Jesus Christ, a towel rolled around a swimsuit, smacks Greg in the head, it drops into his arm as Kevin strolls out grinning big. Okay, let's party. Mm. Exterior Ooh. poolside moments later, Kenny G! Ooh, what a mm. choice! Walks from the cabana speakers as Kevin mans a big barbecue and serves a line of plate-holding people. <laughs> the cold buffet is on my left and there's plenty of bubbly so enjoy. I'm also hilarious. Stem and steaks. Monet Chandon. Oh, this guy's good. Jeez, what does Riley do for an encore? Maybe he'll walk across his pool. Linda score. Dina and Lion calls to Pam by the cap, cap, uh, cabana. Honey, is Greg okay? Oh, Greg answers. Climb from behind the cabana door. Fine. And then Kevin steps out looking less than impressive in Kevin's white, tight Speedo. Debbie checks him out. Hey, sexy, nice suit. Yeah. May as well be in my boxers. You mean my boxers. <laughs> Kevin looks up from the grill where he's serving Ben. Hey, buddy. How's that suit working out? Not too big, I hope. Unless you're a bit small. In places. Great. So would you like salmon, swordfish, or a little of both? Both sounds good. I'm pretty hungry. They call that the munchies. Because <laughs> <laughs> Greg squints wondering what the hell that meant. Pam, Glenn, swing by the cold buffet and I'll bring yours over. Great. Thanks, Kev. Greg nods thanks and he and Pam shuffle over to the cold buffet. Pam later lean out the two bowls of gazpacho. Lean. He's not wearing a Speedo. Relax. We're all family here. Good. Because if the pool is cold, they'll be calling me Peanut! I knew that would bug you. 
He only calls me that because of my initials. PB, Pam Burns, peanut butter. Perfect boyfriend. Petty bullshit. Peanut party of two. He turned to see Kevin coming toward him with a plate of... The salmon and two swordfish to go. He uses tongs to place them on their plates. Wow. Wow. Well, Looks great. That's great. Good. And eat up because after lunch, we're playing a little aqua v-ball. Pool volleyball? Sounds like fun. Yeah, I love games. Uh, extra swimming pool later. Uh, floating volleyball net bisects the pool. Oh, I forgot about this part too. Bob, ben and Bob are in the water, opposite sides. The others are standing at the water's edge. Everybody's naked now, apparently. Dear God, they're picking teams. Kevin? It's a shock. Kevin jumps in beside Bob. Chest thumps. High fives. Denny. Crap a loose. Deb. She jumps in as the others do as they're called. Larry. Pam. Linda. Dina. Oh, I'm not playing. The chlorine dries my skin. Oh, but mom, the teams will be even. Four and four. They're even now. See, you don't need me. Greg stands there invisible and now Pam is pissed. Would somebody please pick Greg? I thought Dr. Bob did. No, but you take him. We'll just play five on four, okay? Whatever. Greg, let's go. Uh, Greg, the sport that he is, musters a smile before dropping in a series of shots. At the net, Bob sets Kevin Spikes. Both who? Greg serves one into the cold buffet. Deb hits one. Bob to Pam. Pam tips it over. Cheers. And his team, Bob, celebrates whooping really into it. Larry slaps the water. Ben ice his team disgusted. We're getting cream. Huddle up. Uh, Greg wades over. Kevin calls to him through the net. Glenn, rush the net on defense. Don't be afraid of the ball. It's Greg. What? It's Greg, not Glenn. Greg is afraid of the ball. It's Peanut. All right, come on now. Let's get organized. <laughs> Larry, Linda, stay back for deep shots. Denny, float. Greg, if I set the ball for you, do you think you could jump up and spike it? Maybe. That's pretty high. I'll bet you would, Panama Red. Okay, everyone, look sharp. Right. All right. Oh, wait. Oh, oh. They clap their hands and wave to their positions, except for Greg, who's still trying to decipher what Ben just said. Service. Sorry, I'm just playing volleyball here. Uh, well, Kevin bloops over. Larry bats it to Denny, who sets it. Yours, Greg. Uh, Greg hits it over to Pam, who returns it. Beep. You got to spike those, Greg. <laughs> Linda bats it to Larry, who sets it again to Greg. And this time, Greg hits it right. He rockets the water, fully extended arm cock as they all watch. Amazed. Greg hits a monster spike. The ball sailing directly at. Gabby's smiling face. Bam! She screams and runs red and falls back, smerged into the water all around her eyes, red lead. Oh, God. On the deck, Dina jumps up in huge eyes, adrenaline pumping. Ah! She jumps in the water, fully clothed as Debbie struggles to her feet, both hands clutching her face, but Larry birth whirl on Greg and their eyes ablaze. What the hell is wrong with you? Jesus, it's only a game. They turn and rush to get Debbie, who's beginning to cry, and Pam shoots Greg the saddest look through the net. Interior moving a few weeks later, Greg's back in, with, uh, in the back with Denny and Pam. When Dina and Ben up front, they ride along in an awkward silence. Greg clearly feeling the tension. He shuffles in his seat then. Maybe you can get a reveal. Heads turn, eyes stares, pain. Exterior of the birds <laughs> home. Like, um, the Buick pulls up to find car caterer's truck, plain white van, and a DJ van, and a number of people waiting. What are they, early? We're late. Park, let me out. Nina gets out, hits the ground running. Caterers, come with me. You, DJ, talk with them. 
The Cadillac pulls up and Dina starts barking orders. Pam, help Deborah, please. Denny, Denny, put the tuxes and dresses in the den. The caddy's doors open and Bob's help Deb, uh, Bob helps Deb out. She holds the ice back to her red puffy face as Pam approaches. How you doing, Debbie Doodle? Bob. Bob. Yes, I didn't hear that. Like she's better. The swelling's down, and it's definitely not broken. Denny takes a closer look. Cool. You can totally see Voight backwards on your forehead. Uh, as Deb takes a lame swipe at Denny, she starts to cry, and Greg turns white. Unmarked van pulls up the drive, and the courier jumps out and sees Greg looking. You, Greg. Courier, I got your bag. Yes. Greg walks over as the guy slides a door open and pulls out a gray tourster. Greg smiles, damned relieved. Oh, thank God. I've got an engagement ring in here. I'm popping the big question day after tomorrow. You checked that bag containing jewelry? Man, you're as <laughs> dumb as a stump. And it's Greg stares at the guy stunned. Exterior burns home back here later. And the joints happen. Dina's on the back porch steps holding a cordless phone, barking orders. Um, on the passing workers, uh, passing her carrying linens, tables, chairs, etc. Okay, uh, the buffet is going to go beside the house. Okay, put the chairs on the lawn. Okay, getting getting married by the spruce tree. This is bad. I need to keep the china and linen here overnight, preferably in a room with easy access. Uh, okay, uh, use the downstairs at Ben. Okay, S sorry. Yes, there's something quick enough to cover a black eye. Wonderful. How late are you open? At a table of slick hair, DJ sits with Debbie and Bob. Debbie's still holding the ice bag to her face. And for the men that got a toss, I play the Hogan's Heroes. Thing. Why Hogan's Heroes? Because the got a toss is always Hogan, the bouquet toss, I dream of Genie. Then it's the chicken dance or the Macarena. And at the end, I play leaving on a jet plane. Well, let's backtrack. First dance, you want Elvis, Whitney, or Lionel Richie? First DJ ever. Interior, the den. Same time, uh, Greg plops the suitcase on the floor and is about to pop the locks when the door slams behind him. He startles. You scared me. All right. Hey, you're back. Open it. Make sure everything's there. Yeah, she asked for it. Greg spins guarding it. I did it already. It's all there. You went through everything? Yep. Come here. He spins okay. her back towards the fold-out bed where the plastic-covered wedding gown dresses and tuxes lie. Realize this is the first time we've had alone together. All day. Watch the dresses. He adjusts and both recline back, nuzzling. I noticed you shut the door. I thought you might want to change. Get out of those clothes. You thought right. Hubba hubba. She reaches down, grabs the hem of his Millie Vanilla tea. He helps her slip it off. She tosses it aside and they kiss Greg's hand seductively inside her blouse. Bam! The doors fly is open and Larry and Ben are there holding table linens and gaping. Pam sits up, Greg's hand prominently inside her shirt. Dad! Everything to knock? She scoots from Greg and smooths her blouse, furious. Not when it's my own office. What are you two doing in here? Larry, where the fuck are you? I'd say rounding second base. Ben shoots Larry daggers as Pam gets up. This is Greg's room, Dad. Not anymore, it's not. The caterer needs it for the wedding and... Suddenly his head whips towards the adjacent bathroom. It's half open. He spins back to Greg, furious. Did you use that toilet? That toilet? No. Because it's running and it only runs when it's flushed, God damn it. Okay, but it wasn't me. Did the toilet just flush itself? He said he didn't do it, Larry. Pam, go help your mother. No. The cat. The cat used the toilet. The cat? Last night he flushed it and left. No chance. Jinx knows not to use this toilet. He never flushes. Well, he did last night, and what's the big deal anyway? The big deal, Einstein, is that when this toilet is flush, it runs. 
And when you have a septic tank that's nearly full and a toilet that's run all night, then you can suddenly have one hell of a problem. Suddenly worker appear in the den's doorway. Mr. Burns. Exterior Burns home backyard. Moments later, the lawn squishes as Pam helps the worker move chairs back towards the house. A few yards away, Greg and a bitching Denny help lugging a table through swampy grass. You're on a roll, bud. Bite me, Denny. You bite me, you cost me my stash. What? <laughs> it was in my coat. That coat and that baggie and the baggie fell out of the tux shop. Now my dad has it and I have to spend the entire weekend weedless. <laughs> Shit, he thinks it's mine. No wonder you're making all the cracks about the munchies in Panama Red. Danny, I'm sorry, but I have to tell him. Go for it. They won't believe you. My, my uh, peas are in total denial. Oh, my peeps are in total denial. And if you did it because you're so... Oh, man, the 2000s talk. Damn. On the porch, Larry and Lydia sit on a wicker as Ben paces with a cordless. Dina watching anxiously beside him. Listen to me. 20 hours from now, I'm having a wedding here. So I need a pump. I need a pump now. No, I will not hold. Damn it. Bob and Deb step outside the lawn being cleared. Dad, what's going on? What's that smell? That smell, Bob, is our shit. Greg, what's the... Bad toilet in the tent. Now the damn cesspool's overflowing. Greg did this. And he tried to blame the cat. <laughs> but the lot is back. Where are we going to have my wedding, Mom? <laughs> so she starts to lose. Dina hugs her and Linda pats her back. Don't worry, Deb. It'll work out. A septic tank come and by tomorrow, and it'll be fine. Yeah, they can send a truck <clears throat> later, but somebody needs to be here. Maybe Greg could stay. I don't have that kind of insurance. <laughs> well, we'll just have them come after the shower. Oh, or before the rehearsal, or, or between the rehearsal, and when we leave for the surf and turf. Turf. I'll <laughs> <laughs> turn and see a flatbed truck with a lift gate rolling down the driveway. The altar on the back. Kevin at the wheel. He cracks the window and yells to Pam. Over by the tree, right? No, not on the lawn. Too late, the wheels of the heavy truck bog down and the cab muck and sink to a stop. Kevin looks down from the cab. What the heck? And guns the engine, spinning the wheels, sitting a huge brown spray flying through the air and straight at the porch where the burns and makes a scream and scatter as the porch is splattered with muddy brackish water. On the lawn, Pam cringes, Greg gapes, Danny grins. Very cool. <laughs> Interior Pam's bedroom later. A knock and then the door opens and Greg peers in. The adjacent bathroom door shut, showers going. Interior shower, Pam's lathering up. So, interior Pam's bedroom, Greg enters, lugging a suitcase and plopping it down on the bed. He then pops the lock, opens it, and. Oh, fuck! <laughs> uh, interior Burns kitchen. Moments later, Greg alone walks and talks on the cordless phone, livid. I know I said a great tour store, but is there a chance the company made more than just one? Well, then is it also possible they gave me someone else's gray bag and in turn gave them mine? He swings the back door open and steps inside to exterior back porch where he pauses Bob and Kevin visible in the background watching a huge tow truck pull the flatbed from the muck. I don't want to calm down. There's a diamond ring in that bag, buddy. In 36 hours now, it better be on my girlfriend's finger or there will be hell to pay. You hear me? Now find out what the hell happened and call me back. Hello? I cannot believe this shit. He turns and heads back for the door. Then he stops and pales because Jinx is in there meowing at him outside. Oh, God. Hey, kitty. Hey, Mr. Jinx, Jinxy. Jinx stares, looks upon as Greg creeps closer. Jinx yells and bolts down the stairs. Greg leaps from the porch, cutting Jinx off. The cat stops, does a 180, then scampers through an open crawl space hatch and disappears under the house as Greg fumes. Entry of the home's dimly lit crawl space. Seconds later, Greg's still holding the phone. Combat crawls through the dirt and cobwebs towards meowing silhouette. As he does, voices carry through the floor above, muffled but clear. Oh, 
To me, it looked like an accident. Why would he want to hurt her? Ontario living near Ben and Linda are in bathrooms, having showered following the flying fluid fiasco. Ben's at the bar pouring. He wasn't intentionally, but he's not in control. Look at his eyes. They're completely bloodshot. More pink, really. Like a rat. Back under the house. Maybe he's using it for medicinal purposes. I mean, he looks kind of sickly. Forget medicine. He's a bong hit. He's been puffing the magic dragon. And louder, clear voices drown theirs out. Looks like I'll be taking that truck back and renting it again tomorrow. Be sure to send the bill to Greg. Exterior back porch, Bob and Kevin walk toward the porch from the driveway where Kevin's flatbed is parked and the altar is unloaded beside it. I would if I thought he could pay it. Did I tell you I thought him going through my wallet? I, I caught him going through my wallet. What? At the tuck the shop. Space. Oh, sorry. At the, t at the tuck shop, I walked in before he could take anything. Unreal. I, 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 I can't. I don't get it. How can Pam be serious about that guy? Who says they're serious? I don't see a rock on her finger. Hmm. Good point. And one to consider. <laughs> They head inside and Greg just lies there, breathing hard, his face full of dust, his hair full of cobwebs, and his jinx bolts past them and back into daylight. Interior master room. Debbie just showered, sits at her mother's lip vanity as Dina dabs foundation on her daughter's black eye. And you can plan forever, okay? And something will always go wrong. All weddings have their one thing. <sighs> So what's ours, mom? The tuxedo screw up my nose so the backyard smelling like a zoo in a heat wave. This is fun. Uh, that's enough, Miss Doom and Gloom. And look, your face is much better. She turns towards Deb in the mirror. It's better, but not much. Sure, under the makeup folks, but how am I gonna look under sunlight? Let's find out. Um, she picks up a hand mirror and heads for the window. Debbie sighs, follows, and then Dina whips open her uh, drapes, and there's Greg in the elm tree right outside her window. <laughs> Next to the elm tree, he freezes horrified, waiting for them to see him, but they don't. The women don't see him, probably because they're facing each other. As Dina is busy powdering Deb's face, as Greg watches Jinx climb higher in the tree, intercut the bedroom in the elm tree. Ow! My nose, it'll bleed again and it hurts. Oh. Honey, if you're in pain, take something. I have a value, codeine. Those will just make me sleepy. <laughs> oh, but you'll feel better, wait here. Mom, no. She covers her eyes and starts to cry. Dina turning back on her as Greg remains frozen watching. Debbie, what is it? What's wrong? I believe. What? I'm more than late. Oh my God, does Bob know? Of course he knows. He did it. I know he did it, Deborah. Mom, don't Deborah me. Oh, I'm a grown woman. Okay, sweetie, okay, I'm sorry. I, I just, do Larry and Linda know about this? Does anybody know about this? A weepy Debbie shakes no as Greg continues to watch wrapped. Good, well, we should keep it that way. There's no sense in having people talk. How far along are you? Almost six weeks. Oh, is that all? Oh, baby, this is no problem. Eight month pregnancies happen all the time. No one will ever know. Debbie not uh, nods and sniffles as Dina takes her hand and smiles. Not that step 40 in one, but a real warm spot. Honey, thank you for telling me and everything's going to be just, just fine. I know, mom. Thanks. <laughs> A quick hug, and then the old mani manic Dina returns. Okay, now get ready for shower, honey. 
and hurry. Okay. Debbie nods and leaves Dina shutting the door behind her. She sighs, taking a moment to absorb what's just happened. She walks to bed and clips her earrings, slips off her shoes, and she reaches for the snap of her skirt. Sweat beads on Craig's brow. Shit. She's undressing. The skirt slides down. The sweater slides off. And just like that, she's in a bra and pantyhose. And just like that, the phone rings. The phone in Greg's goddamn hand. He stares at it, horrified. Just when his eyes start back to the window, Dina is staring right at him. Right through him. Hello? She whips the drape shut as Greg sees a whimper and the phone rings again. Greg hitting a button to try to mute it because he accidentally hit talk because. And we'll meet at the beach house. Did you hear a click? Hang up, hang up. Greg panics, bobbing on the phone. And as he lunges for it, the limb he's standing on snaps beneath him. The falling and ripping of the home's uh, wire run from its bracket and sending a long whipping live wire to the ground. Exterior burns home various rooms. People react as blow dryers, stereos, and lights go out. The tree, Greg hangs from the tree, feet dangling while below him, extrude the yard below. Um, the wires whip around like sparks spitting snakes, one of them hitting the elm tree while the other wiggles over to the all wood, just lacquered wedding holler. Whoop. Greg climbs and coughs in the rising smoke as above him. Jinx meows and leaps to the rooftop. Greg yeah. follows. And as he grabs the gutter and starts to pull himself up, the gutter bounces and Greg's pack of camels jostling, then falling off the edge of the rising cloud of smoke as the back porch below the door banks open bob ben larry and kevin rush out kevin stopping and screaming as he sees his beloved altar now fully engulfed the fire is licking the elm and the house ah! fire fire everybody out 991 call 991 um exterior back porch Debbie, Linda, and Pam, all in robes, and Denny rush outside onto the porch where they are eyeing the leaping flames as Denny whoa's and Debbie gasps. Is Greg okay? Where's Greg? On the roof behind them, Jinx and Greg scamper by. Uh, Greg drops to the garage roof as Jinx jumps down to the flatbed and Greg dives through Denny's blinds. Back on the back porch, Dina Rowe runs out, sees the fire, and smolders. Uh, Back in the backyard moments later, a pair of firemen train a hose on a smoking black and elm and a charred steaming pile of hand carved debris. On the porch, Bob consoles a melancholy Kevin as Larry, Ben, Pam, and Linda listen to a wizened fire chief. Because we'll be a tough to tell given the number of contributing factors here. You've got an old tree, power lines, a highly flammable wood object art. <clears throat> the porch door swings open and as all the heads turn, Greg steps out looking showered, wet hair and confused. Wow, thought I heard sirens. Just where shower. have you been? In the shower. And the power went out and the water pressure dropped. What the heck happened? The wedding altar burned or the hofa. Nearly took the house up with it. Showering, huh? And what were you doing before that? God, I don't know. I was in the front yard chipping golf balls. Don't get funny on us, farm boy. Greg, I was in the shower when the power died, and then I looked for you in the bathroom downstairs. Okay, and you, you didn't find me, did you? You know why? Because he wasn't there. Dina now dress tips outside and fixes Greg a look as Greg waits for an axe to fall. He was upstairs in my shower. In our shower? Yes, right before the fire, Pam was using her shower, so I let Greg use ours. Find everything okay? Sure did, Dina. Thanks. I even used your, uh, what do you call it, uh, soap. You used her soap? <laughs> did you use her deodorant too? <laughs> no, no, I think I'll stick with Pam's. That's right, Greg. You just keep your secret and I'll keep mine. She flashes him the thinnest of grins and Greg gets it. He nods and they have a deal. Satisfied, Dina moves along. Uh, Debbie, call Phyllis Brown and tell her we're going to be later to the shower than we thought. Uh, uh, Denny, call the floors, tell him we need a trellis or something for an altar. I'll call a tree trimmer to clean up the elm and the Edison crew to hook up the power. Ben, 
finish putting the china in the lens and the den. And if our guests will dress, um, I'd like to be out of here in 10 minutes tops. She turns and strides back into the house, a beat, and then the rest of the group returns and follows Ben, Denny, and Banks, all shooting at Greg as they head inside as Pam turns to Kevin, still moping on the steps below. You gonna be okay? Yeah, I'm gonna go thank the firemen. Mm -hmm. uh, he shoots Greg a less than friendly look before heading off and talk to the fire chief. Pam turns to Greg, not happy. This isn't right. What isn't right? The way they're all looking at you, the way they're talking. Wait, do they think I had something to do with this? Do they think that you started the fire? Yes. That's nuts. Why would I do that? Why would they even think I would do that? What's going on here? Why are they all out to get me? Nobody's out to get you. Craig. Ben's in the doorway between the den and the porch, fuming. Uh, interior deck den, seconds later, Ben and Larry each hold a piece of the broken outlet cam, Greg and Pam facing them. You broke it, didn't you? You broke my brand new, never used outlet cam. Why would I break your camera? That's what we'd like to know. Mind your own business, Larry. It is, it is my business, half of my business. It probably just fell or something. Care to elaborate? Dad, don't you dare start to interrogate him. If Greg said he didn't do it, then he didn't do it. So you didn't break my camera? I wasn't anywhere near your camera. Okay, then. Let's all take a look, see. As Greg looks to Pam, confused... Ben bends and opens a nearby cabinet to reveal a small high-end VCR and monitor as he snaps on the unit's big battery. Dad, were you spying in here? Spying? Of course not. I was simply testing out a prototype. I can't believe you. That is sick. Honey, I didn't know he'd be down here. If I did, I certainly wouldn't have left out my incredibly expensive one-of-a-kind equipment. Ben hits stop, grabs the VCR remote, and hits play as the tape heads start to engage and Greg starts to sweat. You know, last night there, there's a chance, a small chance. I, I bumped it. You bumped it? I thought you didn't go near it. Did I say that? I don't know why. What have since? Now on the TV, Greg in his undies walks towards the camera. I clearly headed right for it. Pam watches stun as the tape shows Greg to pick it up. Look, look, are my eyes open? They are very cool. I'm sleepwalking. Sleepwalking. Mm -hmm. You know, I've suspected this for years. But now I finally have the proof. On the TV, mm -hmm. Greg's rotating uh, the camera around, staring it to, uh, to its lens, his eye filling the frame. Look at that. Look at my eye. It looks like I'm completely awake. Mm -hmm. On the TV, the image wet pans, blurs, and snow. Wow. See that? I dropped it. Man, I'd love to make a copy of this to a sleep clinic. God, Greg. She pushes by him and storms down the hallway as Ben and Larry stare at Greg, looking damn smug. Interior. Come on. We're not. Um, Pam's room seconds later. Pam flops in her bed face down, teenage girl style. A beat later, Greg comes in and she looks up. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Mm -mm. For what? Breaking the camera? Flushing the damn toilet? I didn't flush that toilet. You sure? Maybe a sleep shat. Okay, you're right. That was really, truly lame. Pathetic, even. But... Greg, you lied to me. I panicked, okay? Can you blame me the way things are going? I feel like I can't catch a breath here. Just one blow after another. He sits on the bed beside her, looking so sad, so sincere. I'm very, very sorry I lied. But you know why I did it. I just really want your family to like me. Right now, I just want you to forgive me. Spam, please. Mm -hmm. You reach up, start stroking her hair. Give me a reason to forgive you. Here's two. I love you. And things are going to get better. I promise. He leans in for a kiss and she leans in too. 
well, they couldn't get much worse. And as they shut their eyes and start to kiss, James! Their eyes pop open. Interior of the dark, powerless kitchen moments later, Larry, Linda, Dina, and Ben face on the phone manic. Oh, God, please, God, let him be there. Bob enters, followed by Denny. He's definitely not in the yard. I checked under all the carts, and no neighbors have seen him. Damn it. Dick. He's not at the city shelter. Um, what about the number you found? The Persian rescue mission? It's for goddamn Iranian orphans. <laughs> we could we could do flyers on mom's computer. With what electricity? Good God, Dad, bite my head off. Maybe the fireman can help us. <laughs> Oh, well, Not funny. the friggin' tree, Larry. He might be. He might be anywhere. Oh, Jinx, my poor Jinx out there alone without food, water, or toilet. He stops as Pam and Greg step in from the hallway. Anything we can do? Instantly, Ben's charging Greg. You tried to milk him, didn't you, you sick son of a bitch? Dad, it wasn't Greg. Jesus! <sighs> He's only here who hates cats. He doesn't hate cats. Get photos. We'll split up two to a car searching groups. Is that Sherlock Bones guy just do dogs? As Denny goes for photos, oh, Ben, we can't do this. We're already late for the shower and we're rehearsing here in an hour. Then screw the shower rehearsal and screw the damn wedding. <gasps> Mom! Ben, you don't mean that. The hell I don't. This is Jinx, my Jinx. And I will not be forced to pretend to be happy while he's gone. Then go find your stupid cat. In the meanwhile, I'll just call Phyllis and tell her that my 20 other friends are waiting for us and we will speak and shove the shower and keep their goddamn gifts. And I'm sure that they'll make Bob and Debbie very, very happy. Actually, Mom, I don't even know Phyllis or any of your friends. No, and you never will because we don't go to their shower and they damn sure aren't coming to your wedding. So, dad's not coming either if we can't find his fucking cat. Pam, don't you dare use the fuck word when talking about my jinx. <laughs> Dina holds up, which is already half black with notes and scribbles and changes. Ben, watching, watching Deb, I'm crossing out the shower and I'm writing off my friends. What about rehearsal and dinner, huh? Does anybody give two shits? Look, D, you do what you want with your part of the wedding, but Larry and I are hosting that damn dinner. Maybe if we start searching in time for rehearsal. Did anyone call the other shelters? We should check the Suffolk County one and then oh, and the one in Cambridge too. Denny returns with a handful of Jinx snapshots. Here's some pictures. Should I go grab the oil portrait? These will be fine. Everybody take one and we'll search in groups. Linda, go with D. Larry with me. Bob, Deb, Denny, take the Cadillac. And Kevin's got his truck. Good. Go with Kevin. Dad, I'm going with Greg. Suit yourself, but let's move. He grabs a photo off the pile and rushes out the back doors. The others do the same. Greg turns to Pam. Right there. I, I gotta get the key. He heads upstairs as Dina is pissed, calls out the other door. One hour, Ben! Father O'Boyle's coming and we're rehearsing at five. Exterior, backyard, continuous. Kevin still watching the fireman, eyes the mass exodus. Kevin, get in your truck. We're all fanning out to look for Jinx. Oh, okay. He joins the march to the driveway as Pam stops the porch steps waiting for Greg to come down. The fire chief sees her and starts scambling her way. Well, now I've got another theory. Anyone here a smoker? As Pam gapes at Greg's scorched pack of camels, uh, exterior back porch moments later, Greg steps outside, key in hand just in time to see an empty driveway. Only the red Ford Taurus is still there. It's Pam? In the distance, the sound of a truck grinding gears. Exterior, or, I'm sorry, interior Kevin's truck heading down the road. Pam stares out the window, clearly upset, as beside her, Kevin puts the big truck uh, through its gears. You okay? Ouch. I'm fine. Ow, ow, ow. Long day. Yeah, poor 
Bob and Deb. I, I just hope when I get married, my wedding goes with her. Yours too? <laughs> After today? I don't think I'll ever get married. Now, never say never, Peanut. <laughs> Kevin's eyes in the rearview mirror. Great. Say some idiots on my butt. Oh, God. Uh, yep, it's Greg in the rental car, exterior two lane highway. Greg crosses the center divider, pulls alongside them. He looks up at Pan, raises his hands. What happened? Kevin leans over, gets a look at him. It's Glenn. What's he doing? Pan keeps looking straight ahead. Just drive. Interior Greg's car, Greg realizes they're not going to stop. Come on. Uh, Horn Blair's Greg's eyes bug. And here comes a bus. Shit. Uh, he nails the brakes and whips the wheel, nearly crawling up to the back of Kevin's flatbed as the honking bus blows by. And interior Kevin's truck, Kevin eyes the rearview mirror and the tailgating Greg. What a maniac. Pam, what are you doing with this guy? Talking about the $64,000 question, Pear stares blankly. I don't know. Then leans against the door, trying hard not to cry. Interior Suffolk County Animal Shelter. Moments later, a steel door swings open and place comes alive. Dogs whine, cats cry, puppies yelp, kittens caterwaul, all of them pressing against cages, begging for salvation. Kevin and Pam walk down the long corridor of double-sided cages, both of them checking each cage for jinx. A beat later, Greg enters looking mad and very confused. Pam, what's going on? Pam and Kevin ignore him and keep walking. I, I come outside and you're gone. I pull alongside, you don't stop. Take a hint, you doofus. Doofus? You guess Ben with that mouth? Uh, lightning quick, Kevin shoves Greg. Uh, Greg stumbles back into a cage, scaring a poor Chihuahua shirtless. Uh, do Chihuahuas have shirts? Oh yeah, stupid ones. Shitless. Then he makes Shitless. this <laughs> Shitless. <laughs> much bigger. Oh, shitless. Oh, God. I pulled a fucking Travis. Uh, you made a joke out of it. Stupid ones. Friend, you are about to be very, very sorry. <laughs> I'm not your friend, guy. I was talking to myself, asshole. As he stupidly charges. Hey. Greg stops. Both turn. Pam staring fiercely. Kevin? see if anyone actually works here, and then ask them if they found a Persian. And Greg, get lost. She spins and continues walking, checking cages. Kevin shoots Greg a satisfied smirk before turning and heading down a hallway. Greg stands there a beat, then notices a door adjacent to the cages marked employees only. Down the aisle, the cages seconds later, Pam walks slowly past cage after cage. All sad, peering inside, but when she gets to an empty one, there's Greg staring back at her through the bars. He's accessed the back aisle that the shelter employees use. What are you doing back there? I got lost. Bad move. Pam walks on, Greg follows, <laughs> walking and talking on either side of the cell block. Pam, wait, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? For whatever you're mad about. She stops, turns, and eyes him through an empty cage. You started that fire, didn't you? What? You heard your mother. I was in the shower. The fireman found cigarettes, Greg, under the tree. Camels. You couldn't do it, could you? You couldn't go a day without your damn smoke. So you bought some at the buy right, snuck in the backyard, and... Whoa, hold it, Matlock. I did not buy cigarettes. And then we smoked, I did have you threw on the roof. Well, there you go. The fireman's hose must have knocked him down. Or you had more in your suitcase. What suitcase? The idiot sent me the wrong bag. What? You said it was yours. You said you checked. You opened it. Uh, and... Pam, let me explain. You lied to me again. Jesus, Greg, you're a sociopath. You probably let the damn cat out, too. Is it any wonder why my parents hate you? <laughs> Come on, they don't again. hate me. Okay, they hate me, but that's uh, that's what's I got to do with us? Pam, stop, please. She does, turning and facing him through the cage of a trembling mutt. Make it good, Greg, because this is it. I'm not a sociopath. 
I'm still Greg, the guy from Chicago who loves you more than anything. Him, I'm your best friend. You don't just dump your best friend. The Mutt whimpers in agreement. Greg runs with it. You don't abandon someone who gives unconditional love someone who lives just to make you happy enough i get it and it's just pointless because despite all their crap i love my family and since they clearly don't love you then but they will i know they will just give me a chance pam trust me i I can't greg not after today she turns, heading down the aisle. Greg stares, too stunned to follow. As he slumps against a cold concrete wall, two voices drift down the doggy death row. Sorry, Peanut. No jinx. Great. You okay? You look upset. I'm fine. Come on, let's try the shelter over in Cambridge. Pam, there's no way he's as far as Cambridge. Besides, we won't make we won't make it back in time for a rehearsal. The door slams with a thud as the mutt whines. And she hears Greg's car on the highway. Grave dries in a daze. On the dash, she has a jinx photo on the radio. Uh, Bread's baby, I'm all I want you. I don't know that song. Greg hits and suffers through David Gates' saccharine swill until he can take it anymore. He jabs the radio's presets, uh, strikes in the way we were. Sadly, Greg tries again. Oh, God, I didn't some Paul McCartney song I've never heard of. He kills the radio. Um, eyes coming on sign. Airport, next route. He puts his blinker on, makes a blind lane turn. Rong, rong. A big red swerves to miss him. Greg whips the wheel and goes through a 360 degree speed racer spin. <laughs> the world outside becomes technical or swirl until the car whoops whoops off to stop and Greg finds himself staring at huge yellow letters and deep blue rectangle and a big pink loaf emblazoned on the truck trailer. Spam! And as Greg stares at the huge sign before him, exterior Cambridge Animal Shelter moments later, Greg and an employee walk past the streets of outdoor runs filled with noisy dogs and cats. Greg holding the photo. Only Persian we got's right there. He nods to the crowded man and sitting in a corner is... Jinx! That's him. That's Jinx. The worker eyes Greg at Jinx photo, including Jinx's blue collar and gold name tag. The eyes are of then eyes the caged cat. Uh, hang on, this cat came in with no collar or tag. And besides, your cat has a black tip on its tail, and this one doesn't. No, this is definitely not your Persian. Man, thought for sure it was him. Darn close, except for that tail. As Greg gets a far away look in his eyes. Jesus Christ, I forgot. I, it's been a while since I've seen this movie. Exterior strip mall pet shop later. A dozen signs hanging in the window among them. Tags made while you wait. Greg strolls outside, paper bag in hand. Exterior strip mall parking lot. The Taurus is backed up against the side of the building. Greg reaches an open window, pulls a small buy right bag paper bag. He then walks to the truck, looks around and raises up to a block all but his head from you. Then there's a sound of plastic opening, a paper bag crinkling, plastic cap popping. Ball rattling around inside a can, aerosol, and then a wail of a cat. Exterior burns his backyard later. A handsome couple flanked by their family stand in the shade of a spruce, holding hands and smiling at a priest, um, which is a boil, prepares to lead them through their vows. Then chainsaws roar as a tree cutting crew attacks the, scorches el- the scorched elm and the burnt altar, tossing the wood and severed limbs into a diesel wood chipper. Belching black exhaust and wood pulp, it's obscenely loud blades competing for decibels with the beep, beep, beep of the Edison truck, backing a cherry picker up to the home. The driver trying not to hit the septic tank pumper, a cute little skunk on its side and its gas mask driver as he wrestles with a sewage filled hose as a large swarm of flies circle drinking in the fetid air. Under the spruce, the determined clergyman tries yelling over the hellish cacophony, but the stress is mounting. Larry and Linda look livid. Pam and Kevin cup their ears, veins bulge in in Dina's neck. Cheers well in Ben's eyes, blood trickles from Debbie's nose, and then all of them suddenly turn and squint and glare as a red Taurus pearls into the drive and Greg gets out, turns, squints the loud surrealistic sight. You! He snaps, pushing by the wedding party and fists bald and teeth clenched. She charges at Greg, out for blood. Dad! Greg's eyes widen as Big Ben's about to strike. Ben, Ben, wait! 
He fumbles with the keys, drops them, kicks them back towards the trunk, scoops them up, finds the one, slides it, pops in the trunk. It just has been about to pump him or pound him. Look. He holds the cat carrier up. The fucking cat was in the trunk. That's nice. A meowing Persian inside instantly. Ben goes from tiger to pussycat. Jinxie. And as a gentle bit turns out, it looks to Greg, eyes tearing. An interior kitchen later, laughter as the two families unwind, sip drinks, and watches Ben waltzes around the kitchen, the imposter cat in his arm. The backyard's quiet now, the worker's gone. Pussycat, pussycat, I love you. <laughs> he spins by Tina, talking on the phone, and then Greg, who beer in hand, holds court with Debbie and Banks. But when I saw his collar and his Mr. Jinx name tag, I was so happy. My heart just soared. Cambridge, huh? Was that far? <laughs> really far? I wonder how he got across the Charles River. Catamaran? Hmm? <laughs> Greg scores getting laughs from everyone but Kevin, who looks annoyed. Pam, who looks reserved. But before it gets too fun, Dina hangs up the phone and turns to Gregory. Uh, well, I just got an interesting call. The tuck shop owner says he found a matching tux in Greg's size and he'll drop it by tonight. Hey, that's great. Yeah, the other time man, yay. So then I'm back in the wedding? Of course you're back in the wedding. You're Pam's boyfriend. You're practically family, aren't you? If you say so, Pam. I do say so, and so does my jinxie. The imposter yeah. cat actually meows. Everyone laughs and Ben waltzing around again as he glides past Kevin and Pam and Kevin reaches out and strokes the cat's fur. And something got on his tail. It's stiff. Kind of sticky. Oh, that's just a little road talk. I'm crawling under a mean old car. Oh, and, and the floor is called back and says she has a nice trellis to use as an altar. And, and Phil is called to say that everyone understands about the shower and then they'll see us tomorrow. See, I knew it would all work out. A toast to things working out. Everyone raises a glass and Ben nods to Greg, who in turn toasts Pam, and she toasts back throwing. Sorry. Fine. Exterior. The Surf and Turd. A waterfront restaurant. Dusk. A neon sign out front. The second F on the Fritz winking. Interior. The Surf and Turd. Private room. Coffee, brandy, flow is the wedding party. Laugh and chat is long cluttered table. Bob, Denny, uh, Debbie, Denny, and the parents all look relaxed and buzzed. Pam and Kevin sitting side by side look less so. An empty chair is besides Pam. Well, gang, it was a hell of a day. Hellacious day. We had a fire. A flood. Well, sewage. Sea page. And dad nearly had a card cardiac. <laughs> Oh my god and i it just goes to show you you can plan and plan but no matter what every wedding eventually has oh, it's, its one, one, thing. one thing. Thing. Uh, ben looks around pam god damn it <laughs> what happened to gray i think he went to the restroom uh oh sure hope the urban turd doesn't have a septic tank. Are you having a stroke? Okay. No, that's not the Kevin line. Not to wait to laugh. None comes. Kevin, that's really uncalled for. Over by the restroom, uh, Greg eyes them from afar, hiding between two payphone partitions and using, using, blah, using both phones. Yes, it's still gray and still has an engagement ring. A ring I need by tomorrow. Hear me? Hang on. What's that? Damn, I called City Shelter. My cat's not there. Back at the table seconds later, Bob sees Greg returning. He tap taps the glass on the spoon. All righty, everybody, listen up. I'd like to take this moment to thank the members of my wedding party for standing up with me and to give them each a token of my appreciation. <laughs> a free angioplasty? Linda scores! No, Mom, but you're close. 
He tosses Greg, Denny, and Kevin three all a small wrapped boxes. Denny tears tears open in a millisecond. It's a knife, Swiss Army knife. Cool. I'm gonna kill someone. They're good ones. Lots of two hickeys. Ben turns to Dina. Is Denny old enough for a knife? Hope you like it, Riles. It's hard to buy for a guy who has everything. Well, almost everything. Uh, he shoots a not too subtle look at Pam's way, but Pam looks down, clearly uncomfortable. And the moment hangs. The band starts up in the adjacent room. The beef do is a look, shuck, baby. Ben jumps up, wiggling his gut in. But you go, Dad. You work that booty. Let's dance. Get in some practice. Yeah. Dina nods and gets up and goes to the uh, Banks and Debbie, who all turns to offer hand to the crabby Kevin. He looks at Pam, smiles weakly, and then gets up and heads <clears throat> with Debbie to the dance floor. The dance floor. Bob bopping along behind them. Uh, that leaves Denny now playing mumbly peg, Greg, and... Want to get some fresh air. Exterior, the surf and turd night. Pam and Greg lean on the rail of the waterfront boardwalk music, wafting behind them the moonlit harbor before them. Full moon. Yeah, harbor looks nice. I can hardly smell the tea. <laughs> Greg, I'm sorry. You're sorry? You asked for my trust, and instead, I dumped you for my parents. Um. You know what? You know what happened when you brought Jinx back, and my parents got so damn happy. I got happy, and I began to forgive you. Okay. It's not okay because it made me realize what they thought about you was more important than what I thought about you. <laughs> nice, huh? I'm nearly thirty, and my sole goal in life is to still please my parents. Well, mine too. That's normal. Maybe, but that doesn't mean it's right. I need to live my own life, and if that means pissing off my parents, then so be it. But they're not going to be forming my opinion of you. Which is what? I'm a lying, catnapping, butt-smoking arsonist? Catnapper, no. Arsonist? Maybe. Liar? <laughs> Absolutely. But you know what? I can forgive that, because I know you lied for the same reason I dumped you. To try and please my parents. She turns to him and takes his hand. And Greg... What you said in the pound, you're still my best friend. And if my parents ever made me choose. Your peas? Why would they do that? They love me if you haven't noticed. I've noticed. Right. So now there's no reason we can't all just be one big happy family. You, me, Ben, Dina, Kevin. Kevin? <laughs> Poor guy. I don't know what I was thinking today. I'm sure he thinks we're getting back together. Still wondering why you two broke up. You seem so perfect together. Kevin is way too intense for me. Always has been. I mean, sure, we get along great, but there was just no fire, no passion. Which reminds me, we should blow this up and frame it. Greg pulls out a slither of paper. Greg's fortune, he takes it from her and reads it again. To, pr to make a chain stronger break it. Wow. Looks like I owe you and Confucius an apology. We can be stronger for this. And Greg, stronger, smarter, richer. Especially if we play the lotto numbers on the back. She <laughs> smiles. He smiles as they glide into a nice long kiss. The house band swings into a romantic Gershwin tune. Greg breaks the kiss. Hey, they're playing our song. We don't have a song. We do now. That's so sweet. He takes her hand as they <laughs> head back inside. Interior surf and turd restaurant dance floor. Moments later, the gang's all here dancing cheek to cheek. Ben with L Dina, Linda and Larry, Debbie with Bob and Kevin. M I A. Greg and Pam sway alongside Debbie. Bob's hand roaming. Hey, hey, none of that. The night before your wedding, it's bad luck. <laughs> Nah, nothing's gonna stop today or top today. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so long as that cat stays put. <laughs> Sorry. Shut the fuck up, Bob. Oh, Jinx is not going anywhere. I shut him up in my den. 
says that she, as the Gershwin tune ends, a voice calls out, hey, where's Doc and Debbie? By the bandstand, Larry and Linda grin again and point them out to the cheesy lead singer as they just snitched you. Uh-oh, tying the knot tomorrow, eh? Well, Darn it, darn it. here comes the bride, Scooby-Doo, all dressed in white, shooby doo And the music carries over the intricate series of shots. In the din dance floor, the imposter cat claws at Deb's wedding dress to shreds. Bob whirls Debbie around on the floor. The imposter cat pees on the laid out tuxes. Finn dips a laughing Dina. Imposter cat pukes on some linens, knocks over a phone. And Larry and Linda clap and laugh beside the crooner. Imposter cat topples a stack of dishes. And Greg and Pam dance their troubles away. Extra year burns home from afar. Night later, headlights die, cars slam, nine shadowy figures move from the drive to the back porch in the moonlight. Love Shack. Love Shack. Love love shack baby. PD, what's this bag here? Oh, good. That's Greg's tuts. Uh, be a dear and put it in with the others. I can't believe Briley just left. Said he wasn't feeling too hot. I see stars. Going to be nice tomorrow. Going to be beautiful. Ah! Lord, what is it? Ah! Ah! <gasps> Injury the devastated dead in the doorway. Nine stunned faces. Eye of the destruction. Tattered drapes. Broken picture frames. Plates. Glasses. Ripped dresses. Toppled shelves. Shattered nanny cams. Phones off the hook. Atop the sofa bed. A licking a paw and purring. Real. <laughs> Debbie Stammer is stunned. You're welcome, guys. Stunned, speechless beside her. Larry is also mad that he actually growls and charges at Jinx. I'll kill you! I'll kill you! The cat bolts and Larry is on his ass. Ben gets on Larry's. Don't you touch him, Banks. The cat flies past the shins of Bob, Pam, and Denny. Dead! Larry! Dude! Who grab Larry as Ben scoops up the frazzled cat. Let me go. You you burns care more about a damn cat than the wedding. You're drunk. And you're a goddamn nutbag. Shut up, asswipe. Denny. She rolls and slaps him on the face. Probably mm -hmm. a first. I'm out of here. He bumps his way out past the still stunned and trembling Debbie, the gaping Greg, and the pale, gasping Linda who crumples against the wall, then drops. Mom! Lynn? They push through and kneel at her side. She's hyperventilating! Get a bag! <laughs> Each hands Bob a surf and her doggy bag, which she shoves over his mother's mouth. Linda struggles and pushes it away, Bob jumping a cold lobster tail and trying again. As Linda starts to breathe, Debbie loses it. <gasps> <laughs> she turns bolts balling and palm and pam give chase Debbie! <laughs> larry helps linda up and her face is still in the bag oh, oh god <laughs> larry looks to yeah, dina and the bed who is still cradling the now calm cat he speaks slowly trying to maintain we will be at our hotel you call us if there's still a wedding. Linda leans on Larry as they hobble towards the back door. They pass Dina, who ignores them, then fixes Ben with the coldest of looks before turning and heading down the hall. That just leaves Ben and Greg and the purring imposter cat. Ben strokes the cat's fur and stares off, eyes glazed. He's never done anything like this before. It doesn't make any sense. He looks to Greg as if expecting an answer. Maybe he was traumatized from being left so soon after being lost. What does it matter? It's done. I destroyed my Debbie's wedding. He sags, chin meeting his chest and begins to sob. The imposter cat dripping from Ben's lap to the floor. Greg feeling guilty as hell as he moves closer to Ben. He raises a hand, hesitates, and then places it awkwardly on Ben's heaving shoulder, patting it as if he's burping a baby. Touched, mm -hmm. Ben sobs hard. He looks up, puffy eyes, filled with gratitude as he pats Greg's patting hand. A cat runs in the back door behind Ben, a Persian. Jinx. Greg 
Greg's eyes bulge. <laughs> he watches horrified as Jinx runs right up to the imposter cat. Instantly, the two twins raise their backs, ready to rumble. The jig will soon be up. Ben! Greg throws himself on Ben as they flop back on the bed, startling the cats who bolt together down the hall. Then Greg, lying atop Ben, gets up on his elbows. I like you, but only as a friend. And rolls off the bed, running after the now gone cats as Ben sits up looking weepy, weepy, mad, and confused. And Tree, the kitchen, Dina sits at the table, shot glass in one hand, vodka bottle in the other. She watches a bleary eye. Uh, she watches bleary eyed as Jinx runs, followed by the imposter cat, followed by. Hi. Dina squints and checks her pill bottles label and then runs. Ben runs by. Uh, B- Benjamin. What? Why is Jinx chasing Jinx? Have a drink, Dina. <laughs> As he runs after Greg, interior burns home, second story hallway. The imposter cat flies up the stairs. Jinx is on his tail. Interior Debbie's room on the bed. Pam sits on the bed, comforting a crying Debbie. Imposter cat runs by unseen as Greg clampers loudly upstairs. Pam looks up in time to see Jinx and Greg fly by. Now what? Back in Denny's room, the cat runs in. Jinx cornering the imposter as they raise their backs. His end cat bite. Greg runs in, slams the door, and dives to break up the melee. Grabs one of the spitting, clawing cats. Get that! Greg. And looks to the window and down at the cat. He's, God, don't be jinx. He then grabs a sling and the water quantum launcher. <laughs> the two neighbors, the neighbor two seconds later, a hair-raising Doppler howl pierces the night as the imposter cat catapults over the tranquil suburbia. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Okay, interior Denny's room. Pam swings the door open. Ben, right behind her. Greg spins from the window and strikes a casual pose. The launcher's rubber sling still swinging a bit behind him. Damn, Ben, what's up? I thought I heard the cat cry. Jinx, Jinx rub against Greg's shins. Greg lifts him up. You did. I was just... And yanks some fur from the end of his tail. Jinx yells. Speaking tar off of him. Soft, see? He strokes Jinx's uh, paint-free tail, looking damn relieved as Ben eyes Greg weary and takes his Jinxy back. Thanks. Well, I, for one, am completely whacked, so good night. Night, Dad. He pecks her cheek, giving uh, Greg a little wave. Hi, Ben. Jinx. Ben half smiles, nods, and backs out with his cat then. How's Debbie Doodle doing? She'll be okay. We had a little talk and wedding's still on for tomorrow. It's just gonna have to be real simple and casual. She thinks maybe on her fifth anniversary, they'll come back and renew their vows and, you know, try it again. Huh. Well, take lots of of pictures. Oh, I'm not coming. No fucking way. (laughs) They laugh and smile and lean in and kiss as it breaks. Greg, thanks for being such a sport through this hellacious day. Or I had worse. Right. I'm just glad it worked out and that my parents really like you. Enough to let us sleep together. Exterior moonlit back porch night. The back door opens and Greg statters out, struggling with the sheet pillow and the blanket. Damn, he squints in the dark. Hey. Bob's there in a chair in the dark with a beer. Bob. Hey, I was just about to crash here. The den smells like cat piss. Oh, well, I'm almost done. Just having one last brew as a bachelor. Greg plops his stuff down on the couch, starts making up a bed. Oh, where are you two going to honeymoon? The Bahamas for a week, then it's off to Stanford and into the OR. Med school. Wow. Once you get through that, you're set for life. So they say. He drains his beer can, crumples it, and stands and stretches. <sighs> Don't pose. You've seen my parents. Your parents. Don't suppose you've seen my parents. Sorry. Yeah, they, they left a while ago. Shit, they were 
They were my ride to Riley's. Really? Well, I have a car. He fetches the key from his pocket and tosses it to Bob. You sure? Sure. You should be careful since I blew off the insurance. Thanks, man. I owe you one. Hey, you too. Bob slaps Greg's back and heads for the car. Greg smiles, sits, and starts taking his shoes off, feeling pretty good about things. As Bob backs the Taurus up to the drive, exterior burns home driveway early morning. The Cadillac pulls in right where the Taurus left. Um, Larlin and Kevin... Larlin and Kev, oh my god, we're like on one syllable basis now, get out wearing sweats, looking anxious. Extra your porch, Greg, head half wedged under a pillow, cracks an eye. Extra the Burns home front door, Larry pounds on the front door, Linda nails the bell. Interior Burns home, the kitchen, Ben and Dina in the robes trade cuisine looks. Into the foyer, seconds later, Ben opens the door, Dina behind him, the trio push by. Larry, Linda. Where's Dr. Bob? Bob? What's going on? Upstairs, Pam and Debbie in, rows, in robes and Denny in last night's clothes straggle out on the upstairs landing. Is Bob up there? He didn't sleep over. What? What? Why didn't you call us? You got a goddamn phone off the hook. Pam and Debbie come down, Denny sitting on top of the stairs. What are you saying? Bob's missing? Not quite. <laughs> I got up and found this. We were hoping it was a joke. <laughs> Kevin pulls a brief handwritten note from a pocket and hands it to the approaching Debbie. She reads, <gasps> No! <laughs> Pam takes the note and reads, Deb, I'm, I love you, but I just can't do this. Sorry. Goodbye, Bob MD. Wow, what a brutal. Oh, man, this must be a joke. Well, where could he go? He has no car. Actually. Greg, wearing what must be Pam's Garfield sleep tea and sporting a pillow hair redo, approaches from the kitchen. I, I gave him mine. gave him yours well yeah we were up late last night talking out on the porch and talking talking about what nothing special life marriage oh my god what did you say to him nothing don't lie to me pothead that wasn't my pot he's high and he's a liar i'm a liar who's carol blonde carol buy right carol meet me at the beach house carol What's he talking about, then? You sneaky son of a bitch. Who's Carol? She's a friend, a realtor. Who gives a shit? Who Where's are you screwing in some beach house? Where huh? did he go? She sold me a beach Who house. Did I know. House for? Uh, you talked to him, to him last... He left for a reason. For our 35th fucking anniversary. Well, you probably couldn't take the pressure of the wedding and uh, Debbie being pregnant. What? Thanks, Mom. Thanks so much. You're pregnant? Pregnant? Jesus. Can't believe you told him. I didn't tell him. Then how could he know? He was peeping on us in the tree. What? I wasn't peeping. You were in the tree? I was chasing the cat. You duplicitous shit. You burned my altar. Fine, I He's burned not your the dumb only altar. One. You happy? What the hell's that supposed to mean? Once I kick your scrawny evil butt. You know, I thought you were eyeing my butt. You no asshole. No wonder Bob split his, put his goddamn He's, shotgun wedding. Kevin, fighting Greg won't get me back. Are you saying that? Why not, Red Sharon? You hear that, Kev? You and Pam. Have nothing. And a deadbeat, spineless coward. <laughs> well, then I guess I've got nothing to lose. It's like that. It's a free for all. Ben and Larry duking and wrestling as Pam and Dina and Linda has a kickback, slap and pull here. Pam works both sides trying to pull Larry off Ben, Kevin off Greg. Stop it. Oh, Stop it. Stop. 
Lightning quick, Kevin pins Greg on his back, but as he readies his fist, Greg kicks and nails Kevin in the bollocks. He folds the knife and tosses it back upstairs to Denny, who catches it while lighting up a joint. Then, excuse me, Greg turns his back on Donnie. On the Donnie Brook starts walking, whatever, I don't know what that means. I exterior back porch, the back door swings open and Greg steps out. Mr. Jinx follows meowing and then dashing to freedom. Greg, Greg grabs his tuck still hanging in his bag, rips the plastic off and starts to pull the pants up under the Garfield sleep tea as Pam steps out looking battle weary. You're leaving? You asking me or telling me? How can you leave? Because I can't. I, I gotta get out of here. I can't take it anymore. He pulls off the sleep tea and starts pacing. Talk about a busman's holiday. I, I can't escape it. I'm still doing it, Pam. I'm still ruining lives. I'm destroying families. Jesus, at least Rita's paying me to do it. Greg. Look, I have plans for us, Pam. Great, wonderful, lifelong plans. But the chain is broken, the links are missing, and let's face it, I'm not worth it, Pam. I'm not worth it giving up your family over. You shouldn't have to make that choice. But I did last night remember okay well now i'm making mine he looks around finds his wallet pockets it you're dumping me over my family pam i'm sorry i love you You, but you just can't do this fine go she's done she spins heads inside slams the door as greg stands there looking totally drained Exterior Logan International Airport day. Cap pulls up. Greg climbs out, puffing a camel interior airport ticket counter. Um, there's one leaving an hour. Do you have a bag to check? Greg stares, stone-faced. Interior airport departure gate three. Moments later, a pair of giggling kids snicker at a point at Greg, amused by his Calactair and Garfield Tuck's outfit. Then Flight 531 flying nonstop to Salt Lake City. Now boarding gate two. Greg casually glances a few yards over. Holy shit. Exterior cocktail table lounge beside gate two. Dr. Bob is there in the doorway, drowning a drink. He finishes up, grabs his bag, starts at the gate, and suddenly Greg's in his face. Bob puts a brave one on. Greg. Damn, sorry about the rental car. The guy just came out of nowhere. What are you doing here? Catching a plane? You take care. Greg, Pat, he pats Greg's arm, starts to go. Greg yanks him back. Wait! How can you do this? How can you leave her on your wedding day? Look, there's stuff going on that if my parents found out... They know about the baby. Debbie told them? It doesn't matter who told them. What's the matter? What matters is you two belong together. Yeah, maybe down the road, but right now, a wife, med school, a baby, it's too much pressure. And after yesterday, come on, how many wrecks do you, you need before you nail the brakes and hang a Yui? You know, it's funny you should say that, Bob, because yesterday, I was running, just like you. Pam and I had a fight, a bad fight, and I was heading right here. But I stopped. You know why? Because I saw a sign. Sign like an omen? No, like a spam sign. But being a big, you know, big believer in signs, I didn't run. So I went back and pay when I worked it out. Come on, you love Deb? Yeah, I love her. The hell, what more do you need? She loves you and you would give that up because you're worried about being happy down the road? Come on. He places a hand on Bob's shoulder, then sighs and gazes off screen and hoping to draw inspiration then. Don't make happiness a destination. Make it your way to travel. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Damn, it works. Good. Mm -hmm. Now let's get you a cab. Damn, Travis cutting off my lanes. He puts an arm around Bob's shoulder and then turns him towards the exit away from the airline ad, hanging on a nearby wall. It's slogan, don't make happiness a destination. They head down a glass corridor overlooking the tarmac. I was wrong about you, Greg, and I'm glad you're in my way. Thanks, Doc, but I'm out of here. What? Things weren't really working out with me and Pam and the family. But don't you love Pam? Sure, I love her. 
then hell, that's all you need. Bob, don't try that crap on me. I've made up my mind. It's over. How can you say that? You thought that yesterday and it wasn't. What if you see another sign? Believe me, Doc, this time it'll make a sign big enough. He stops. Something on the tarmac has caught his eye. Next to your tarmac, a suitcase sits in the middle of a huge deserted area cordoned off with yellow police tape. A gray tourister. <laughs> Terrier terminal, Greg turns to a crowd of people watching through the glass. Whose suitcase is that? Whose suitcase is it? They just found it abandoned, so they're blowing it up. Greg books, uh, looks a few hundred yards downrange, and there's a blue BPD bomb squad van and the mess of news reporters. No! He pushes open an emergency open door and the alarm sounds. What are you doing? Next to your tarmac, Greg runs towards the suitcase, frantically waving his arms. Ah! Two airport cops, the ones who busted before spy him. Of course. As they give chase, slow motion series of Greg runs, slicing through the yellow police tape. Two cops follow, pulling their guns. News reporters turn and point, stunned. Behind the van, a bomb squad guy pushes the detonator back to normal speed as kaboom. The tourister explodes in a big orange fireball, and Greg and the cops are blown through the air, and the fiery debris rains down all around them. On the tarmac, Greg cowers in a billowing cloud of smoke, covering his head as flaming debris lands all around him. When he finally looks up, he sees something small burning, tumbling right towards him if it were sentient. It stops mere inches from his blast blackened face. Even on fire, you can see it's a box, a tiny velvet box. Greg blows it out, picks it open, picks it up, opens it, the ring, and he grins and gazes up in heaven. The sog fades up. Leaving on a jet plane. I don't know. Anyway, I exterior burns home backyard afternoon. 40 odd people watch Debbie with a nice white sundress and Bob and Dockers in a polo shirt hold hands and run a gauntlet of flying bird seed to the driveway and an idling limousine. At the limo, Greg, Pam, and Denny and the parents cheer and throw a rice bin holding jinx and sniffling. Then Debbie holds up her bouquet. A handful of women surge forward screaming. Debbie whines to throw, then pivots shit here and then flips it a few feet over uh to pam greg's brilliant diamond ring shining brightly on her finger mm -hmm. pam smiles deb smiles and then she and bobby get in the limo denny shuts the door and the car roars away trailing a just married sign on the trail of the old tin cans then larry and linda turn to pam george and the burns is a toast to greg for making today possible to greg to greg to greg they toast a weepy Ben kissing Greg on the lips. Our next son. He pats Greg's head and then turns and yells to the others. Okay, everybody, let's go cut a rug. Dina, Ben, and the Bankses follow, uh, head for the fast filling dance floor. Greg and Pam follow, walking slowly arm in arm. It was a beautiful wedding. Uh huh. How soon can we elope? <laughs> <laughs> They laugh and share a kiss and glide onto the parquet just as the DJ spins another record. Hey, it's that cool and romantic Gershwin tune, the DJ winking to Greg. As soon as you want. Just one thing you need to do first. And what's that? Meet my parents. <laughs> we will soon. Pam smiles as they kiss and dance to their song. It's the end. Let's go meet the Fockers. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to probably meet the Fockers soon. So, um, everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you had a great night. Everyone did a wonderful job. Good night. Bye. So did Ann. Oh, no, 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 no don't hold. I accidentally almost ended the meeting. Uh. <laughs>